excellent to each other and party on. We're back for another Legacy League, and today we are playing Overlord of the Bailmerk, Esper Vile. Overlord of the Bailmerk is a creature that was just printed a few weeks ago in the new Duskmorn set, and it is very powerful. It is a 5-5 five, five for 5 mana, but it has this alternate casting cost where you essentially kind of suspend it in a way. You immediately get the cool ETB trigger, and then after 5 turns, you get the actual creature itself, which is a 5-5, five, five, and it has an earl like effect where whenever it enters the battlefield or whenever it attacks, it gets this trigger. What does the trigger do? Well, you mill 4 cards, and then you may return any non-avatar creature so you can't return overlord of the bailmark to overlord of the bailmark but otherwise that doesn't matter uh but any creature in your graveyard it doesn't have to be one of the ones that was just milled or you can return a planeswalker in your graveyard and this deck has tons of creatures 20 uh 33 creatures and we have two planeswalkers as well so it's almost always going to hit something so what's so good about this why are bob huang jarvis Yu? Uh, why are players that are very seasoned picking up decks like this uh, based around this Overlord of the Bailmark card? Well, the reason is if you blink it, it's quite good. And we have Felia, which was printed in Modern Horizons 3, which can blink uh, any permanent that you control, any non-land permanent, whenever she attacks. So you flash her in at the end of turn two, and then turn three, you play an Overlord of the Bailmark, and then you attack with her, and you blink overlord of the bailmark you've just gotten two etb triggers and now instead of being this enchantment creature with impending it's just a five five in play that can attack next turn so this presents a very good clock and also that'll put a plus one plus one counter on felia which is non-trivial i i have one games and in fact this league is actually two leagues because i've already recorded an entire league we're going to go through and look at my replays from that league uh and then we're going to actually play a live league as well so you're getting 10 matches for the price of five, which is free, of course. Uh, just subscribe and like if you uh, enjoy this content. And let's talk about the rest of the deck. So this is Esper Vial, which is one of my favorite decks that I've played over the years. Uh, I own all this deck in paper, uh, including the Gilded Drakes, which are this really uh, rare, expensive, reserve list card. But basically, Gilded Drake allows you to control magic when your opponent's creatures essentially you steal their creature which is an incredibly powerful effect when your opponents could be playing you know archon of cruelty they could have you know these uh devourer destinies they could have all kinds of big creatures and stuff right and you're gilded draking and you're exchanging your 3-3 flyer for their best creature and then you blink gilded drake with felia and suddenly you've got a second creature and a third creature and you can just keep doing this every turn stealing their best creature stealing their psychic frog stealing you know whatever it is that is standing in the way of you and victory so this deck plays a lot faster than the old esper vile decks because it's less focused around value and it's more focused around just solid good cards and beat down so if you look i kind of sorted the cards into two columns the creatures again 33 creatures tons of creatures but basically we've got just good all-around cards we've got four psychic frog we've got four tamio we've got four baleful strix which now that people are playing orcish bowmasters less and less baleful strix is quite good against eldrazi it's quite good against opposing psychic frog decks so um yeah we've got all these cool blue creatures we've speaking of blue creatures we also have harbinger of the seas this is a three color deck but we do have basics so we can grab this and you can actually vial this in off esper vial uh aether vial sorry the namesake of the deck this aether vial is kind of how you break parity and get ahead let's talk about the deck more structurally because there are so many creatures and yes this is a yorian deck uh you really do want to just have like the very best spells that magic the gathering has to offer which are swords of plowshares brainstorm force will you'll note there's no ponder in here um we just don't have room because we need too many creatures but we do have value engine cards like recruiter of the guard uh like baron which can bounce a gilded drake to your hand um also it's worth noting that um teferi can bounce so essentially we have seven ways in our deck to bounce this gilded rick if we don't just block it with a baleful strikes or something like that uh yes this can kill us if we're not careful but if you play carefully and if you are calculated with how you use this you can absolutely manage it and you can even potentially get multiple triggers out of it uh so the other thing to note is because the format is so creature heavy and all the top decks are winning through creatures 
uh, the top decks being like uh, Red Painter, uh, Moon Stompy, which is also a mono red deck, and then uh, both Blue Black Reanimator, Blue Black Tempo, and Eldrazi. Like all those are creature decks. That's how they're winning, right? Like the Storm decks and things like that are kind of marginalized. Doomsday is winning through creatures usually, although they do have a dim- Doomsday combo. They're more tempo. Uh, and I've actually prepared a nice sideboard guide, which uh, I will include down below you'll see it for tempo doomsday we literally make zero sideboard substitutions uh let's take a, a look at the sideboard so here, let me uh, I, I didn't mean to spoil that upcoming match but um okay so we can take a look here so we ha- are a yorian deck so yorian takes up one of the 15 sideboard slots it's really not that big of a deal uh because reanimator is so strong we have four fairy macabras these not only are uncounterable but they're you know, a trigger that you can cast at any time, even if they have like a Teferi out. Very good against um, Cephalid Breakfast, for example. So I, I kind of sorted our, our um, sideboard into three piles, right? We've got our kind of like anti uh, Eldrazi for Consigned to Memory. We've got our anti Reanimator. And then we've got our anti Red, which is really just like Hydroblasts and Prismatic Endings. And then I have a single Force of Negation, which really just comes in against Storm decks. Um, it's I used to play four force of negation. I was so high on it, but now like consigned to memory does a lot of the things that force of negation does. And it's just like a little bit more compact. I love inexpensive interaction and my sideboards are almost always like free or extremely cheap spells. Okay. So that is the deck, uh, the mana base. I'll talk about that real quick. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a deck that has 18 fetch lands in it, but this deck has 18 fetch lands. Traditionally as vile, played wasteland we are not playing wasteland what we're playing instead is some basic lands and uh four dual lands and we're playing two surveil lands and we're playing two crocus now everything but the crocus can be fetched with almost all these fetch lands we'll get almost all these lands uh there are some basics that can't be fetched by all the um fetch lands but 18 fetch lands the reason is first we don't have a lot of cards that go to our graveyard. We're basically playing out permanence for the most part. So it is nice to have things in the graveyard for Psychic Frog. Second, uh, it does give us a ton of flexibility. Uh, early turns, a lot of times we just don't have anything to do. If we, we really start to curve at two, um, aside from uh, uh, Aether Vial and from the uh, Tamios. So a lot of times we don't have a turn one play and we just want to pass and in-step in uh, surveil. Second thing is uh, these are great for just parking them in play and your opponent even if they have wasteland, they can't really waste you. So you can build up lots of fetches. Uh, so you'll see in these matches, it comes up all the time where I've just got like tons of fetches in play and my opponent has a wasteland and like I can, just, I'm just ready to party whenever, right? Uh, just playing a land and passing. And in fact, a lot of times I actually play out my duels so I can get wasted knowing that I've got a whole bunch of fetches coming uh, and then I can run my opponent out of lands. So that happens in the Death Shadow match uh, that comes up as well. So that is a very long thorough deck tech but essentially this deck has game against everything it's exile based removal so it's very strong against reanimator it has uh, dedicated sideboards for the three most powerful decks in the format and you know their slight variants and uh yorian comes out end step and just blinks everything and wins and you can even re yorian with caracas or you know, you can failure to blink Yorian and then get Yorian triggers again. I mean, you have insane inevitability, even against Beanstalk decks, even against Jeskai control, you know, decks that are drawing cards like nobody's business. We can still kind of outvalue them. And at the same time, we can win through early aggression and we can just, you know, basically make the game unreachable for a lot of people. So a lot of you may be wondering, why would you play this when you could just play Death and Taxes, which is much simpler in terms of the mana base and everything like that. And the, the card is Force of Will. This flips so many matchups and it it makes us actually like viable against a lot of these you know turn one turn three uh you know storm decks oops all spells like like i've beaten a lot of those decks thanks to the power of force of will and when you you know caracas go or something like that your opponent is not going to expect it when they see yorian they usually just assume that you're on a um you know death and taxes deck so uh the like opponents do not expect 
Force of Will. They do not expect like Psychic Frog and things like that to come out of a Yorian deck. It, it, this deck has the element of surprise. A lot of times people have to read your cards because they're completely unfamiliar. Gilded Drake, like this card has been around for like 25 years and people still struggle to like remember what it does and all the rules around it and stuff. So uh, I've heard whenever your opponent has to read your cards that's like a huge edge because your opponent your opponent has all this additional cognitive uh load associated with trying to figure out what you're likely able to do and what your deck is capable of doing so uh yeah that that is the most exhaustive deck tech i think i've ever done on this channel let's get to the actual rounds and again uh, i'm going to play a full five rounds uh but first i'm going to go over five rounds that i just finished and we're going to do the replays so uh, there are timestamps below if you want to skip to the live rounds, but I think you'll learn a lot from watching the replays as well. So let's start with those. All right, this is match one, game one. Uh, and uh, I did not win the die roll. Uh, I'm up against a player, an unknown player. I reveal my Yorian and I get to work. This is, so first thing you'll notice is there was a Witch Enchanter. Uh, I did have a slightly different mana base, which, which had Witch Enchanter. I also had a Bowmasters in that I've removed in favor of just having uh, you know, a cleaner, simpler mana base. But those were really, I think, the only significant changes other than to the sideboard. So um, yeah, this is a Aether Vial hand, and you always want to start Aether Vial. Aether Vial is solid, and it's worth mulling to find an Aether Vial. If, you, if you're not sure whether your hand is keepable, just mull, and you can likely find an Aether Vial. Uh, a lot of JTL005, who kind of created this deck like 10 years ago or whatever, um, he, he often says that he just uh, keeps any hand that um, has lands and spells in it because you're going to outvalue your opponent and stuff like that. But I think if you can get an Aether Vile hand, it's really good. So I, here I uh, put back one of the excess lands, and we have a very slow passive land, and it looks like, oh, no a turn one frog that we can't interact with. We're dead. This game's over, right? Well, let's see what happens here. All right, so uh, I'm like, well, I'll surveil. Okay, this is very good. We drew the combo, right? One of the many combos in this deck, uh, Felia and uh, Overlord. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play out my vial. And if they daze it, that's fine. Like it's a daze out of their hand. Uh, they, they are correct to daze there. Like it sucks that they have daze there because we would really like to be able to play Felia uncounterably. But because they played that Lotus Petal, I'm like, okay, well, they're on Doomsday, so they're not going to have Wasteland, so it's fine. Like, I'll just gradually curve out. And I'm like, if they, oh, no, they took Orphelia. Yeah, they, they realized that there was a combo there. I think they may have tanked for a little bit on that Thoughtseize. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get a Underground Sea, I think, and we're just going to go ahead and try to jam this, and it works. So we can immediately get back to Felia if we want, and I think that's the take... See, what do I take here? Okay, I take the Felia back. Um, and I'll just pop that out there. I'll pop out my opponent's graveyard too, just so this button doesn't move around. Uh, I, I'm also, I'm gonna make this like a little less wide. It's like way too wide. Okay. So Overlord triggers in step. So in five turns, we will have this giant creature. But in the meantime, we're getting beaten down and our opponent just played another frog. We're totally screwed, right? All right, so I am gonna go ahead and play a Felia main phase. And... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to, my, my thinking there was like, I don't want them to draw a force. It increases the likelihood that they force it if we let them get another attack in. And Felia is pretty important to my game plan. So they may have a fatal push for Felia here. I put Caracas in the graveyard. I just, I don't want to draw a land even if it is. Okay, and then here we go. We're getting to flip. We're getting to live the dream. All right, so Felia come, gets a plus one, plus one counter when Overlord comes back. Overlord triggers, and we can get a Psychic Frog, uh, a Baron, or a Tamio. I think Psychic Frog is perfectly reasonable here. Is that what I get? Yeah, I get a Psychic Frog. And uh, I think this was a misplay. I should have played out either Psychic Frog. Oh, wait. No, this is instep. I couldn't play anything else. Uh, but I should have played out an Overlord main phase just to make more efficient use of my mana. That was a punt. Um, okay, so... They have tons of pressure, and also keep in mind they're drawing to freaking doomsday, right? Like we're we're like doomed if they find that, and that's what they find. So I attempt to force. At this point, they've got so many cards. Wow, it actually worked. Um, yeah, and here's Tamio, and it's important to note that Tamio is about to flip 
if they exile enough stuff. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to exile enough stuff. Yeah, they, they have already given it flying, the frogs. So they are going to flip Tamio, and next turn they can just regrow their Doomsday, and they can just go again. That, that's why like Tamio is so powerful in Doomsday. Doomsday has been just tearing it up lately, this tempo version. Um, so, yeah, it's like a serious issue. And they, they play out an extra Tamio, which uh, I'm like, mm, I'd probably hold that for force at this point because they're going to like flip it next turn. Maybe they're planning on minusing it and then plusing again and just putting me through the ringer, making me have a force every turn. Well, I drew a force. That's a great card. Uh, so I am going to play the Overlord, which I should have played last turn. Let's see what we get here. Uh, we get a Baleful Strix is pretty good at, at uh, stopping aggression. Yeah, and that's what I grab. Here, I'm just going to play it out first. If they daze, they daze. Oh, I'm not going to play it out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, so, Tamio debuffs, which is fine. We can still kill Tamio, and I think we should. Uh, they may just... Th Actually, they may have like played this Tamio. I was, I was saying it's not a good play, but they may have just wanted to chump since they are drawing a lot of cards. It's not a big deal, right? Okay, so uh, Solitude is pretty good. Uh, I can't immediately use it. I think Harbinger's not any good against them. Uh, Baron could potentially bounce one of the frogs back to hand. I'm not sure what I'm going to take here. Solitude is a good general pickup because, um, yeah, we don't have a white card yet, but we could easily rip one off of Baleful Strix. All right, there's the Strix. And they let their Tamio go, which is interesting because they could have potentially doomsdayed. Oh, and I drew a land. That's great. So now I have um, Force of Will through Days. Felia returns, and now we get a second trigger and Solitude into Solitude. So it's great because with this Overlord card, you see all the juicy stuff you're going to be getting out of your graveyard. You, you get a preview of what's coming, and you can kind of plan around that. So I think what I did was I, um, I, I knew it was likely that I would eventually mill a white card. I have a high white count, so Solitude would become live. All right, and uh, they are giving flying to these, and I think it's totally reasonable just solitude one of them. The Tamio's about to flip. I don't really care. I, so I think the right thing to do is just block and not make a big deal out of it. So these both have flying, so I am definitely going to block. Do I want a solitude to get rid of, like, if I solitude now and kill the other frog, then they don't flip Tamio necessarily. Yeah, and I'm doing all this with Days Protection, which is really great. Okay, so it sucks. Like, I am going down in cards, but they, they give up. They're just like, they can't hang with the freaking Overlord of Bellmerk. He's awesome. Let's go to round two. So it's worth noting that, like, if I were playing Wasteland, which this deck has always traditionally played Wasteland, and it's just, uh, I mean, maybe I'm the first player to ever try playing without Wasteland. I don't know. I've never seen a list without Wasteland. But... Just having a ton of mana has been super good for me. Okay, so oh, that's an unfortunate uh, turn two doomsday, right? Or turn one doomsday on the draw. Um, yeah, and they took my... It's protected, so we're pretty dead here. I want to play it out, but I don't think there's anything I can really do here. I play out a Psychic Frog, which can actually do a substantial amount of damage. They pass the turn again, which is weird. Like a double pass the turn pile when you have three cards in your hand. Okay, so I just hit him for enough that next turn I can definitely kill them. And uh, I have a lot of stuff. I guess I could have played a Tamio and flipped her, but I just don't think that's where we need to go here. Okay, so they are going to be able to take something. Um, I put my Vial back. So I think they're going to probably take... Oh, interesting. They took Gilded Drake. I don't know why they took Gilded Drake. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They have it. So... Yeah, it was just like a one turn, like pass the turn twice pile. I don't know why they would do that, but once they saw the coast was clear, I guess I didn't have any pressure when they did it, and then I played Frog, and suddenly they needed to worry about their life total. I mean, Frog was definitely the most aggro thing I could have played there. All right, let's go to game three. All right. So I reveal Yorian, and this hand is not super, super good against Doomsday, but it's not bad. I mean, it has mana. Remember, Doomsday does not play Wasteland. So I can surveil here and get a uh, meticulous archive. Then I can have all my colors and double blue. All right. So we surveil an extra baleful strix into the yard. We don't really need it. And psychic frog is the highest upside card here. So I go ahead and play it and it resolves. 
but you know they're likely to remove it. They play vexing bobble. They have ritual. Ooh, doomsday! Damn, already. That was much faster than I expected, and they even had vexing bobble to stop if I had force. I didn't have force, but I easily could have had force. Okay, they're at eight life, so two attacks, and I do kill them. Okay, so I go ahead and take half their life, and now they have to have a removal from my frog, and I'm gonna go ahead and play out baleful strix. So there, there was definitely like an option here. To, oh, this is great because now I can have uh, days protection, so I can. Bellful Strix, and I can have Solitude up. Let's see what we draw. A plow. Okay, so we, we have two points of interaction, but we're only attacking for one now. So they are going to be able to draw through their entire deck. So I pitched that. that uh, Recruiter is not what I'm looking for. Brainstorm is fine. I'm going to go and Brainstorm now. Uh, yeah, it sucks, but we just didn't find anything. Tamu is not going to do anything. We, we need to do damage here. A frog would be something really good here if we could find that. All right, and they thought says Oracle. Whatever are we to do? They still have three cards left in their deck. Well, I'm just going to plow it. And they don't have enough uh, loyalty or whatever, uh, devotion. Okay, so they gain a life back, which unfortunately means that we're extremely unlikely to be able to kill them through combat here. So I don't have any more surveil lands. I just get a land to shuffle. That really sucks, but I can hard cast now. I could, in theory, hard cast of Solitude and then... Uh, also, do something else, but they basically they force the issue. Yeah, and they still have one card in their deck. So it's possible that had they waited, but they don't have uh, counter magic for this, and I am able to kill them. Had they kept the Vexing Bobble, I don't know what's in their hand. Maybe they have a Daze in hand. Uh, actually, let's check a look and see if they would have had Daze because uh, had they kept the Vexing Bobble in, I would have had to... Um, all right, so unfortunately, something about like my multi-monitor display, <laughs> like I couldn't show what was in Exile. Uh, very frustrating. But basically, uh, I think that there was a decent chance they had a days there. So had they kept the bobble in play, obviously if they waited a turn, they would have been good, but they just didn't wait. And I think that probably cost them the game. So we were able to win an extremely unlikely, you know, I think that was like turn two, Doomsday. And they were able to get rid of our frog. So, yeah. This is Bryant Cook, by the way. I wonder what he's playing. Uh, he always plays the Epic Storm, which is his deck that he created, which has a pretty huge community around it. He's one of the more popular. I, he's probably the most popular uh, Storm combo um, creator. Maybe the most popular combo creator total. Okay. So, let me actually narrate what's happening for once. Okay. So, we've gone back and forth. And I have forced. And I uh, regrow force. And I'm just basically trying to stop anything he can do. He's got five cards in hand. I've got, you know, tons of card advantage, but um, I don't have a lot of mana to deploy. So now I do have force, but unfortunately he has green mana, which means he can veil me. So he is, you know, extremely skilled, like way more skilled than I am. And I know that like I'm unfavored here. I'm just letting these tick down. And sure enough, uh, he has not one veil, but two veils. And I made a big mistake here. I should have gone ahead and cracked the clue to draw because it, it's extremely unlikely that I draw a, f a force. There's three forces in 59 cards. So basically like a 5% chance that I draw a force. But had I drawn a follow-up force, I could have done something there. Uh, but instead I let it resolve. And then I was like, oh, well, gee, it's too late. And then my opponent uh, proceeds to dumpster me. And, I, you know, I'll just... I, I guess I can show you game two, but he does the same thing. He's the world's greatest storm player. <laughs> like, and uh, he, he puts in the work. I've heard that he does like a hundred leagues or, or he does like a hundred matches a week or something when he's preparing for a uh, big tournaments. And of course he can do that really quickly because he's playing storm. And here he just turned ones me with echo with the veil protection. Not that I had anything going on. Unfortunately, I just never found a force, which does happen. Even like this cyborg configuration, I had seven, Forces post board. Now I'm just down to five. Uh, uh, there's one in the board. Let's take a look at this. So um, this is round three. So we're one on one. And uh, I am up against, uh, I'm not sure what they're playing. Let's see. All right. So we're doing our normal like NCEP surveil. It looks like they're on some sort of like fair green strategy, maybe. Yep. Uh, it looks like Turbo Depths. 
Okay, so this is not the most unfavorable matchup for us, considering that we have Felia, we have Caracas, we have Solitudes, we have... Actually, like, <laughs> we're probably the nightmare matchup for them. Okay, so here, uh, they are going to besage you. My Overlord... My Overlord has already generated card advantage, and now I'm getting a land with it. So that's, like, totally fine. I'll take that trade. And then uh, I just have to chill, and I know that they're on depths because... Like this combination of lands, definitely like that's being staged. This is not traditional lands. Traditional lands would have been doing other stuff other than just playing out lands. All right, so Overlord comes out and we can return yet another Gildedrake, uh, which really are just force fodder. Like they're not going to put themselves in a situation where I can take their, uh, oh, when I actually had a discard because they found the Caracas there. Okay, now they have the depths. So this is Dangerous City. And uh, I just opt to like not do anything here because I have like tons of interaction. I've got double plow. I've got solitude. Um, and I can also flash in Felia if, if somehow they give me a window to do that. So they do make it and I just immediately plow it. And then they're like, okay, and out of this world, which is a free protection spell essentially if, for Merit Lage. And then I plow again and that works. And now they're at 37 life and their Sylvan's crying and they're very quickly rebuilding. What should they name here? Well, almost always they'll name Wasteland because, you know, why wouldn't Esper Vile be played, playing Wasteland? Like, this is the only version of Esper Vile, this particular deck here, that doesn't play Wasteland that I've ever seen. So, they name Wasteland, and we're just like Teferi, and I'm just like, I need value. I don't have anything else going on. Uh, I like the ability of shutting off their instant speed interaction. I have essentially uncounterable solitude now. So I think that's fine. And then I'll just chill and let it tick down. So they replay. And I did type some of their mana. And sure enough, they do have the Dark Depths combo. So they probably feel pretty safe here. Now I have a blocker. Um, it's worth noting that they did use a Simeon Spirit Guide previously. All right. And now they are coming in with the thing. And... In my opinion, you just take care of it immediately. Like you don't wait and try to be clever because they have lots of interaction. And yes, they would have gone to like 57 life, but like I've got a frog. Uh, I've got this overlord coming down. I've got a lot of stuff and I would have just eventually won because I would have outvalued them. All right, so game two. We are up a game. So the only sideboard changes I make here, actually <laughs> sideboard automatically opens, which is nice. Um, I didn't make any changes. Yeah, I, I made like zero changes, which is pretty common actually. Uh, I think I probably should have brought in Harbinger, even though it's pretty bad. Like if you have Harbinger in play and they um, are able to um, get a Dark Depths and then if they're somehow able to remove your Harbinger, it immediately triggers and they immediately get the uh, 2020. So it is high risk, high reward playing that card. So they choose to take my Strix, which is a blocker. And does yield me a card, so I think that's a totally fine take. Uh, it's worth noting that they have that I have Caracas here. Sylvan Safekeeper is a total pain. Like this is a real pain, uh, and it's played in Naughty decks and Elf decks. You know, blue white control decks just don't really have a good way of interacting with this thing, other than sweepers, which my deck doesn't play. You can imagine a deck that has, you know, thirty three creatures and it wouldn't want to play <laughs> sweeper effects. I'm not going to be playing like Wrath of the Skies or. Any of those abilities. All right, so my opponent is making it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, like there's just no way I can override all the, uh, they can just sack creatures and stuff. And I, I kind of wanted them to do this end step. Um, and what I was doing is I was soliciting this, which would imply that I had follow-up, but they had the, uh, the Elvish Spirit Guide and they were able to go ahead and make it. And I knew that risk when they did it. Uh, but I mean, Turbo Depths does have a lot of pressure considering the deck does like almost nothing to interact. Uh, they just have to figure out a way to, to wiggle out of your defenses. Okay. So this time I did bring in the Harbinger just in case. This is a solid hand. It's a one lander, but it's okay to take my time here. Baleful Strix is going to help reduce the likelihood that I just get killed. Now they do play cards that give their creature unblockability, like I think Sejuri step and things like that. And they can get that at instant speed with crop rotation. So that is something to be cognizant of, but I like having the force. Uh, I like, Oh, 
So we need to find a land here. Fortunately, we're playing a very high land count and we're playing an extremely high fetch count and we get rewarded for doing so, for being disciplined. So I think I probably put back, I mean, I can play out Tamiya this turn, which is also a blocker. I think putting back Recruiter is fine and I think putting back, I don't want to put back Feli because she's so integral to my game plan. Let's see what I put back. I put back, uh, yeah, I put back Teferi. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and play out the Tamiya here. And the great news is their deck doesn't play. Oh, that sucks. I'm not sure how many Crocuses they have in their deck, but this is the second time they've drawn it, and it's pretty bad against, or I mean, it's pretty good against my deck. Okay, so here comes the Harbinger. Now, we do have a Force to protect it, but this is the Danger Zone, and they just scoop. I don't think that they have removal in their deck. Um, so, yeah, Har uh, Harbinger apparently is good against Turbo Depths if they scoop immediately. All right, let's go to round four. So we are now... Um, uh, we're two and one, having lost to Storm and beaten uh, the first deck we played against. Okay. I say the first deck we played against because I, I can't remember which deck that was. Okay. Now we are, oh yeah, Doomsday. Tempo Doomsday, that's what we played against. Okay. So they force our frog, which is fine. Like frog is there to be forced. Like I'd much, okay. And now I can see that they are in fact on Nadu. Um, and I want to keep my removal up. Uh, and I don't need to play around days generally. Now I've got double removal up. So the question is, okay, and I would historically always have just played Vile. Like, just play it. Like, they may not have it. But, you know, if they have some combination of counter spell and land and Nadu, then the game's over. So we can't let that happen. All right. So I played Disciplined, and they don't have it which is fine. And in step, I'm just going to get this off the table. You have to target that rather than the Nadu because by the time the Nadu resolves, it's too late. All right. And it's worth noting that at this point, like I've already disconnected once and lost a ton of time on clock. My internet provider is driving me crazy. Like our internet at the house just completely went off. I had to start tethering. So I lost like 10, like probably eight minutes. Um, and I've been playing very fast. And this deck does not take forever to win like the old uh, Esper Vile decks. That's one of the great things about this new version because Bell Merc just gives you so much power on the board and like you've got a lot going on. Okay, the Brainstorm in response to Felia, um, which is fine, like emergency brainstorms, I'm here for this. Okay, so I get my uh, untap. Now they are playing cards like uh, Plow because they're a Bant deck. I think it's fine to just attack and see if we can get the Felia trigger on uh, Strix. There's no point in attacking with Strix since it's about to be blinked and it's gone and we're going to get to draw a card for free and we're going to be able to hit them. But they have dun, 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 Endurance. It looks like they're casting. Yeah. And that will eat my Felia and that will stop my card advantage engine. And I mean, yes, I could just like guilt, like let Felia go and Gilded Drake, but I don't think that's right. Like I am putting myself very much in danger by solituding this because they could just untap and have the combo. They only have two cards in hand though, but they do have the mana. I think it's correct, though, to keep Felia around. So I'm going to risk it. Endurance is a very good card that their deck is able to play. All right, Frog is out, and let's see if we're dead. We rip Witch Enchanter, which, again, is a card I've decided not to play anymore. Uh, I just, I've never really cast it. I always just pay three life, and then it gets wastelanded, even though it's a monocolored land. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sold on it. I'm also not sold on sinking the super. Uh, certainly not sold on Bogart Trawler. Uh, I think I, I would rather, like I understand it's cool to be able to recruit her for a land, but I'd rather just have a land that just like an extra fetch land. So, um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and recruit her here. And I think the get is a solitude just because it insulates us. Let's see what I get. I should get a solitude. Yeah, that's the conservative thing to do. Now we can attack and we can, uh, we can potentially draw two cards here. So we're incredibly far ahead, but it's worth noting that uh, my internet is about to disconnect again. Okay. And Harbinger, they have a single basic. Okay. So they do have the combo. I'm going to force here and I'm going to pitch Drake and we win. So that, that went exactly how we wanted. We just completely outvalued them. We had tons of flexibility. We had extra insulation. Like had they countered this, we could have just solituded that and they'd be left with a Nadu which is not nothing, but is, is, it doesn't mean game over. So let's, let's go to game two. So this was 
probably the most fun interactive matchup. And I, I know that I used to be a, a little crybaby about Nadu. It's, it's not fair. It's like a glitch. It's so unfun, you know, and things like that. But like, I've kind of come around on it and I think, I think it's a legit thing to be doing. Uh, at this point, my opponent is very understanding of me, like making them wait a whole lot because I'm disconnecting and stuff. Uh, yep. Halfling, the strongest opening you can have plow, the strongest response you can have to a halfling. All right. Green sun. They're going to go get another halfling. Okay. So we do need to deal with this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to risk now, Bowmasters, again, card that's no longer in my 75 or 95, uh, but it, it is an okay card. And you'll see why it's kind of just okay here. Even in a situation where it's supposed to be really good, it's not that great. Um, okay, so we do flip our Tamio. We're going to plus her. And then we can get we can buy back Plow next turn. And almost always when I'm against a deck that might be playing Prismatic Ending, I always like buy it back. Because you know going the ultimate route, it's just risky whereas you can cash in your value. Okay, so now we have two different cards we have to get rid of if we want to keep Tamio around, but I still think it's worth getting the plow back because it's better to uh, be able to plow than to die. And they tap that, like, I'm not sure what they have that they would be tapping for. Okay, surveil a uh, land, which we don't need. And now you'll note that I, I have Orcish Bowmasters in hand and ready to go. And they don't not do, which is, uh, I had to keep the white up anyway, so I couldn't, it's not like I could have Strixed or Overlorded there. Okay, they're green sunning. Uh, this represents not do. So I am going to go ahead and plow here. Now they can change their mind and they can go get Uro instead. Yep, and they get Uro, which is probably better in this situation because they do have enough uh, cards to escape. Oh, and they even drew Karak Karakas. That's a really strong rip. Okay, so now my Gilded Ring, my Solitude, none of that stuff is going to matter because they can just Karak us back. So I think going ahead and playing out the, uh, the Overlord gives me the highest likelihood of, well, I would need to get a white card to pitch to Solitude, but I do want to find something for Solitude. So I, I go ahead and play it out just because it does have like, like Baleful Strix is literally just like a, a free card. Um, but overlord represents a little bit more flexibility. And actually because the return happens at the same time as the mill effect, like, uh, endurance in here is not particularly strong, but they instead consign, which is their last card. So I just want to emphasize, I'm in an extremely dominant position here. They cannot untap and just find the combo. They can bring back Uro. So they do choose to bring back Uro. They exile their entire graveyard basically to do so. They have one card left. And uh, we have an active Tamio. We've got this counting down. We just drew Solitude. Again, Caracas is the real thing that is like slowing, gumming up the works. All right, so I'm just going to chill here, count down. They're going to surveil, uh, the brainstorming, and boom. They, they had one card in hand, so I knew that I was going to get like the perfect Bowmaster on their brainstorm. And I'm able to kill Halfling, and I'm able to do two damage to them. Uh, I should have technically, this is a very minor thing, but I should have pinged them twice and then uh, pinged them first and then pinged. The, uh, just in case they ripped like a, uh, um, what's a card, uh, Veil of the Summer, then they could have potentially, I would have dealt a damage to Halfling instead of dealing a damage to them. Very small, minor thing that could have been tighter. Um, okay, and now they plow this so they can attack in. So they're being pretty cavalier about this Bowmasters. Bowmasters is going to grow. I opt. They For some reason, they attack me instead of attacking Tamio. I feel like 100% you attack Tamio there. Uh, so yeah. Like this Caracas is a, oh, that's why, because they just can PE it. But now they have zero cards um, in hand, and I've got so much value here. But look, I'm down to six minutes because my internet's disconnected uh, twice now, uh, about seven or eight minutes each time. So, and this is only game two. So I know that I have to win this game. There's no chance of a game three because of the internet connection issue. So I'm swinging in for six here. I'm feeling pretty favored if they don't manage to find the combo in the top two cards. They don't even attack. So, like, I'm so far ahead. I flicker wisp here. Uh, they have one card. Are they going to consign again? Yeah, they consign again, which I don't think you bring in consign against this deck. Uh, I, I think it's really just like Eldrazi and um, uh, Karn Forge and stuff like that. So, I'm able to fly and attack in here. Um, I get a card. I play out a land. I've got a plow. I've got all this exciting stuff going on. And I even have a white mana that I can go get the... So. Okay, Nadu, kind of scary. 
Unfortunately, I can't really interact with Nadu without giving them value, but it's probably... Oh, also, they can just Karakas the Nadu back. This Karakas has pulled so much weight. Like, if you're playing this deck, definitely put Karakas in it. Karakas has completely stymied all my counterplay. Um, Karakas has been, like, the key card in this game, and it's kept them alive quite a while. So they let Uro die, which is fine for them. They actually go after my Bowmasters itself, even though I've already generated, like, the six... Uh, you know, the 6-6 six, six, uh, army. And now um, I'm just going to attack in, uh, attack in with everything. And, like, I think this was probably a loose play because, yeah, they can bounce Nadu, they can get a card trigger. Um, I should have... Well, there was no point in flying or anything. What I probably should have done is um, use one of those spells first. Like, I should have used the Recruiter first. I'm not sure what I would have gotten there. So I put Yorian in the hand. I could have also put Yorian in the hand beforehand. Like, if this Yorian resolves, the va the value is insane. But look at my clock. I've got 2 minutes and 38 seconds. I lost, like, 12 minutes on the clock. And this deck is not, like, lightning fast. It's not Lightning McQueen, uh, if you've ever watched Cars with your kids. Um, it's not that fast. Okay, so they are going to be able to kill this. But this has already generated a ton of value. They're taking 6. They're taking another 4. They're at 3. Right? Like, actually, hmm. And I attack with Fl Flicker Wisp. Yeah, they would have just killed the Flicker Wisp, but, but, hmm. Yeah, I don't think I could have won there, but like, I probably should have attacked with Flicker Wisp there. Okay, so at this point, I can search my library and get like, you know, another card that prevents them from being able to attack. I'm ripping a ton of lands, unfortunately, which my deck doesn't have a ton of lands. They get rid of the army. They gain a bunch of life. And I think I'm still favored. Like, I still think I can win this game. But... I don't have time. Like it, it's just too many clicks. Uh, like Yorian could could blink stuff. Um, I could you know Crocus this and, and attack in. I, I think I kill the Teferi here, but I just don't have time to end the game, and so I just scoop, um, which is very sad because like I feel like I you know we won game one, game two is going great, and I I was maybe making a few bad plays toward the end due to time pressure, but they're at five life, right? Like I'm about to play a frog that can get as big as their Uro, you know. Uh, I can bounce their Uro at any point if I need to connect with the frog. Uh, I've got Yorian, which like refills, essentially. It gets me two cards. I just don't have the time to play these cards out. They've got three cards in hand. Maybe they're good. Uh, I mean, maybe they could have assembled the Nadu combo, but I definitely feel like I should have won this if it weren't for my internet going out. So sorry if I seem salty, but like that that would have been a really, um, you know, like it, it would have been, you know, potentially a 2-0. Um, but like uh, you see a one, two, but basically there was not a third game. I just conceded immediately because I had like 40 seconds on the clock. Okay. Final round, uh, fan of the channel. Um, and I don't know what they're on and I keep a hand that doesn't have a blue card for force. This does come up sometimes, but we do have a pretty good blue count. I think we're like 27 out of, uh, 80 cards. So not as high as like, you know, blue, black tempo, but it's still respectively, acceptable all right so i'm able to surveil here and i actually like surveilling here because i want to bait more wastelands they've already wasted me once they waste me a second time uh that's fine with me i'm just gonna go ahead and keep playing this i played out the caracas specifically because i have a second one and i want them to waste that so i'm just gonna be very passive because i realized as soon as they fetch water grave that they're on death shadow which is not heavily played but it's still a respectable powerful tempo deck that can get you it is very weak to white Okay, so here I've got Felia. I'm about to start comboing off. And you can imagine like the game doesn't last long from here. Get our 5-5 five, five back. We've got, we've got them dead on board. <laughs> they have to do something, right? And then they cast this card, which I haven't seen before. Let's take a look at it. You come to a river. Okay, so uh, choose one. Fight the current. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Or uh, find a crossing target creature gets plus one, plus oh. Until end of turn, it can't be blocked. Okay, so you can see why this would be a good card when you are playing a 13-13 creature, right? Um, yeah, it, and it's never 13-13, but it can get up to like 12-12. Or if you get like, but but I mean, you can make it a 13-12 if you're at one life and it'd be unblockable. So this is a cool card. I've never seen this card before, but it seems like a good tech. Okay, so I handily won that and now let's, let's take a look at game two. And this is a pretty fun interactive game, if I recall, uh, just from a few from a couple hours ago. All right, and I've got a great hand. Again, you want to see lots of land in these tempo decks. Uh, they're not going to kill you instantly, right? So you want to like Gilded Drake. I shouldn't have 
bin that. I feel bad about binning that. I think I was just like, well, I don't have an engine to do it, but like I did have an engine. There was a multi-turn line where I recruiter for Felia or a recruiter for Baron and I can get it going. So I do um, have to solitude to get rid of, uh, and this is precisely where like Gilded Drake would have been great because I would have loved Drake, their psychic frog here. Now, granted, they do have like bounce effects and things like that, um, but I still think it'd be better than just like taking a bunch of hits from frog, which is what I ended up doing here. So I do have Vile out. I am taking up, they have five cards in hand. Um, I rip a Strix, which is really good. And I'm like, I'll just Vile this in. You can't counter it, but you can ping it. Long goodbye. Okay, that gets rid of it. But I did yield a card. And it's worth noting that um, I'm still in the uh, attack step. So I can just cast this Bowmasters that are ripped. Pretty good. Ping. Okay, and Bowmasters is pretty good in this particular game. Uh, it, it It's a lot better than it was in the previous game. Okay, so I'm going to come in for three here. And uh, I've got Felly up. I've got Caracas to bounce Felly. I almost always take the Vile up. It used to be like conventional wisdom was you leave Vile on two because you have all these two drops. But now we've got solid four solitudes. We've got four overlords. We've got, uh, of course, Yorin himself. Uh, so we definitely want to have Vile all the way up to five when we can. So I just let it take up every turn and kind of get value while I can on its way up. And now they double death shadow and they now have spell bomb, which they're not going to want to use one. My, and it doesn't really do anything against my deck. They shouldn't have brought it in. Should have boarded it out for something else in my opinion. But, um, yeah, I can recruit her here. Uh, I think it makes sense to go get a solitude here. Oh, I get a Strix. Okay. Uh, because it, it was a turn or two before I could, um, but I do have Felia. So if I want, okay. So they are able to daze to just to get back their surveillance. That's all that happened there. So I am going to get a card here and I have a blocker and it's a banger. Swords of Plowshares. Uh, Swords of Plague Wind against this deck. Basically, you kill everything. So I'm not pinging them here because I don't want to make their death shadows even bigger in case they have something like a dress down because I do need to respect the fact that they can just kill me. Also, that crossing the river card, uh, that could definitely be the end of me here. Not, not quite. Um, but it would do a lot of damage. Okay, so I just jump. And I, I'm confident that like I'll get another draw trigger at some point where I can get another army to block. So this goes all the way up to five. And this is great. This is where Yorian really shines. So they force this, I think, or stubborn denial. And I brainstorm trying to find some interaction. I don't find any interaction. I go ahead and take the land fetch. And I'm just going to fetch and immediately brainstorm to try to find some more good stuff here. And we do find a force, which is not bad at all. Um, yeah, I think we keep force in hand and then we just put yarn in hand. And then now we have two different things covered. One, if they try to do something crazy strong, uh, we can force, uh, and then we can just let our creatures die, but that would be sad, but that is an option. But because we have vile on five, we can just block and then we can yarn in and they'll get to draw a card off frog, but okay. Yeah. They waste. Uh, they wasted my Caracas, which does stop me from doing Yorian loops. So I'm just blocking everything here. Um, they pondered, which I think might be a mistake, but they know that I'm going to be able to Yorian in here. So maybe they were just desperate. So Yorian does come in and uh, I blink everything except the Orc army and we take zero damage. Uh, or I actually, yeah, we take zero damage. Like I, I even denied them the draw off frog. Um, okay. And they're brainstorming here while they can because Bowmasters is out of play. And then uh, they have a huge Murktide, which is not a problem because we have Felia and we can just exile uh, Murktide. And they have Snuff Out. They, so they, they were joking about how like it's a little too late and it is because they could you know, stop um, one of these threats, but ultimately one, like, I, I'm going to be able to get something past the Murktide and their two life. So yeah games so that that's the first five rounds so we had a three two a positive record which i really do believe would be a four one if uh my internet had connected and you notice that like all those fair matches we felt really dominant like even uh like doomsday was a little touch and go but uh against those fair matches i feel like we did great so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and load up a league and we're going to do a league i'll just show the deck one more time before we jump into the league here we are. So this is after the sideboard changes. 
uh, where I removed the Witch Enchanter in favor of an additional fetch land, and I removed Bowmasters in favor of, gosh, what was that in favor of? I can't remember. Oh, uh, I brought an extra Teferi, and I only had one Teferi, and I had a Flicker Wisp as well. I don't think Flicker Wisp is worth it. Flicker Wisp is great because it can just hit an Overlord and immediately flip the Overlord, but you're going to be able to flip them through Yorian. You're going to be able to flip them through Felia. It, just be patient, and these things will treat you right. All right, I'll see you in round one of the league. All right, we're back for round one, and I've gotten a decent night's sleep, and we have uh, a great hand for an unknown opponent. We have Force of Will, uh, which can pitch either a frog or a force. We have an Aether Vial. Um, we may force to defend Aether Vial because it's all we've got going on. I do think this Flooded Strand gets a basic island here, just in case. We're on the draw. I have no idea what our opponent is playing, but if they're playing a Glass Cannon deck, we do have Force for that. Hopefully this isn't a Thoughtseize. That would be pretty bad. Okay, this is looking like a Reanimator to start. And I'm glad I have Double Force. Nothing good ever comes of Turn 1 Dark Ritual. <laughs> oh, wow, Star Scream. Let's take a look. Living Metal, Flying, Menace, Haste. Whenever Starscream deals combat damage to a player, if there is no Monarch, that player becomes the Monarch. Whenever you become the Monarch, convert Starscream. Okay, so it's a 2-3 Flying, Menace, Haste. <laughs> I, why do they have to get Haste as well? Um, well, this is going to be a force because we don't want them becoming a Monarch. So what I'll do is I'll just pitch one of my frogs and... Uh, I will keep the other force around just in case they do something extreme because I have no idea what their deck is up to, but I know that getting becoming the monarch turn one is scary. Wait a second. D does it come in as star, star scream? Oh, it's like during your turn. This is vehicle increase. Man, there's so much text on these. Okay. Um, you may cast this card for converted. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they were, they were casting it as the flying man is haste thing that uh that gets them the monarch yeah, i've never seen monarch on three mana is that, that's not a new card i've just never seen it before okay and it in the comments let me know if you think that that was a mistake to force that but uh in my mind like it's a two for two because they did dark ritual it so we just ripped the combo so now we have felia and overlord so even if we have nothing else going on, I'm happy to pitch this frog to stop something big that they're doing. All right, they've got four scary cards left in their hand. At least not. This is fine. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a 2-2 black token. Whenever an opponent discards a land, add two. Okay. Whenever an opponent discards a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. Okay, so basically this is not good on its own they have to do things like him to talk me to enable this all right we're back to our turn uh, our opponent is having some internet issues which i can identify with <laughs> okay um so we're just gonna chill um unfortunately we can't actually do a lot other than chill um i do want to get Felly into play however it is worth noting that i can't overlord um yeah, <laughs> so we're, we're not in the best situation, but assuming our vial stays in play, which, um, you know, black decks don't generally deal well with artifacts. Player draws three cards, and then discards three cards at random. This is going to be a force. Unfortunately, we have to force this because this gives them uh, like three triggers on Waste Knot. Okay, so I'm glad I held the forces um, because that would have been catastrophic. Like they would have gotten three things, which could have been zombies, could have been lands. Uh, could have been a lot of things. All right, so we're going to get a trigger here. Um, we're going to... I always go up now p past two. So this is like really our window to play a two drop. I, I mean, I think I'm going to just play this now because if we find a land, it's so good. All right, there we go. And now what we can do is we can end step uh, Felia and then we've got our loop going where we can draw a card every turn. So this will be like a Howling Mine, a one-sided Howling Mine. Let's see if they have anything to force us to discard. There's Starscream, Living Metal, Haste. Okay, so Living Metal, Haste, 
Uh, whenever it deals combat damage, whenever you become the monarch converted, I don't think they're going to attack here. Maybe they'll attack. I mean, the star screen would die. All right, this is great. So unfortunately, wow, they're attacking. Well, I am going to block there. Wait, can't be blocked. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize, man, it's got evasion as well. Haste, evasion, and it brings in a monarch. Why isn't this card played more? I guess because it's a three drop and it gets dazed. Wait, why am I getting the monarch? That seems like a bug. Why did I get the monarch? <laughs> That's so weird. That must be an, a bug. And because of the bug, I was so confused. Well, yeah. Okay, so I was so confused that I uh, I failed to put in the uh, uh, Felia here. So, this is on the stack. I want to activate this. What's going on here? Uh, okay, that sucks. Um, okay, this is a total disaster. <laughs> so, I, I meant to violin Felia there. Uh, unfortunately, like I got screwed up with the triggers. Yeah, this sort of stuff happens. Um, wait, oh, so I get the monarch. I become the monarch. That's so confusing. I had no idea that I was going to become the monarch. Um, okay, well, I'm not going to attack. Uh, yeah, this is just a disaster. It, it, it does it interplay. No, it did attack. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to collect myself. This card, I've never seen a card that gives your opponent the monarch. <laughs> that is weird. Okay, so I'm just going to pass uh, and look like a fool for like, okay, I get a card, which is nice. Uh, so Felia can come in. There's my land drop that I would have liked to have made. Um, I'm just going to chill with my Belfast trick. They're going to attack. They're going to get the monarch now. I can't block because it has menace, right? Yeah. All right, new cards. See, this is why we test. So this doesn't happen at Eternal Weekend, and I'm like not losing due to sheer confusion, which I've certainly lost games due to sheer confusion about what cards do before. All right, so now Feli is coming in. We're going to be able to hopefully get the Monarch back. Okay, so now uh, Starscream Power Hungry. Uh, whenever you draw a card, if you're the Monarch, target opponent loses two life. So I lose two life. Okay. I'm not that concerned about my life total. I could easily become concerned about my life total. This is going to go up. So again, because of Overlord, because of Solitudes, we're, we're now playing uh, effectively nine five drops. So I do almost always turn this up and it becomes like a great source of mana. My opponent is saying it's hard to, it's hard to believe how bad it is. It does seem like a pretty mediocre card. Uh, I, you know, I'd rather just find land at this point. I guess that is the second blocker. Does this have menace too? Let's see. Flying. Uh, draw a card. If you don't mark. Whenever one or more uh, creatures deal combat damage to you, convert. So I'm about to convert it back. It's, so, it's such a confusing card. It's so, like, different from any card I've ever seen before. So I'm going to attack here. I'm going to target my Strix. Okay. So I'm going to deal combat damage. I'm going to become the Monarch. That doesn't matter. I don't believe this doesn't have any shroud or anything. And it's many keywords. Okay. So I'm the Monarch now. Um, I do want to play the second vial. I, I'm not going to hold it just for brainstorm equity. And it's nice to have something else ticking up. So I'm going to draw a card first. I, yeah, I mean, Tamio, I'm going to be drawing so many cards that I almost certainly couldn't have, could have flipped her here. Oh, Psychic Frog's good. And a Teferi. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably just wait till the, to see what they cast. If they just straight attack, I'll just plow. Okay, there's no trigger. I just don't want to get blown up by something like it transforms me combat. Okay. So they're attacking. Let's see if they commit anything else to this attack before they pass priority back. I'm getting attacked by an airplane. So far, Waste Not has not done a thing. 
which is an indictment of the card. Um, it's a very cool card. It's aggressively ca- costed. I think it's more for EDH and stuff, but people have tried to build around it in Legacy. Uh, there we go. It's going to do some stuff now. Um, yeah, it resolves, sadly. I get a force. So I lost both of my overlords, which really sucks because I was hoping to put them into play. They discarded a shielded, which would have been terrifying. Uh, they're unmasking me, which is fine. If they want to go down a card. They can choose something they want to take, though. Probably take Teferi, because Teferi represents uh, killing one of their guys and drawing a card. My best draw is probably something that can remove one of these counters, these cards. So let's see. If it's if they choose a creature, then they get another zombie. So they should probably choose my recruiter, but they're heavily incentivized to choose Teferi. Actually, if they choose Teferi, oh, it discards a non-creature, non land card, so they get to draw a card if they choose Teferi. I'll be stunned if they don't choose Teferi here. It's worth noting that this is going to go to five, and I can just go grab Yorian. Yeah, so I was confused about <laughs> Starscream. I thought it did all those things and gave you the Monarch. No, it gives your opponent the Monarch. That's a lot weaker. Okay, so here they get a token. So they do have, like, overwhelming force here. Like, we could die to combat, which would be embarrassing. Um, yeah. So I am going to uptake both of these. Now I have to be careful about which one uh, I'm uptaking because I never want to uptake this again. Caracas isn't the worst. Okay, so Caracas gives me the ability to attack to exile one and um, to bounce my Felia back to hand where it's safe. Um, if we just get... If we just go get our... Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in hand. Now I'm going to play this out. I think we just pass into combat and then we can do it. I don't think there's a reason to do it before then. They are going to be able to get the Monarch and do some damage to us, but we're going to also be able to take out one of their dudes. Yeah, I, actually, I think it makes sense to go ahead and attack and then we can exile one of theirs. And then I'll just wait and see what they do as far as combat. They're probably going to double block, which is fine. Oh, they're not. Okay, well, that's fine too. Let's put Yorian in. I will just blink this. Yeah, I don't actually want to blink Felia because I wanted to have that uh, counter. So she, I think she will become a 4-4 here, if I understand correctly. We draw a card, Solitude. <laughs> Guild the Drake, not the best when all our opponent has is zombies, but if they play Starscream out again, that'll be okay. We can hang on to the Monarch here. If they have a big Haymaker spell here, I can force it, and then I can also Solitude and just keep the board simple. That qualifies as a card I want to force. All right, so we could just give them the monarchy, the monarch, um, or we could keep it and we could just lose all this stuff. I think it's better to just let them have it. I'm just going to block one and I'll let two through. And we're playing a dangerous game here, but I don't know if they have a way to blow us out. This doesn't do damage to us. Yeah, because I can actually Solitude and put it into play. So this is the one we want to... We'll do that second, and then we'll do this first. You can see, like, with all the clicking and everything, why this is such a time-intensive deck to play. So this one I am going to use, and this one I'm going to always know. Always know to trigger ability from Aetherbell. No. Okay, cool. We did it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to upkeep. So we can blink one and do some damage. I think that's better than drawing a card. We can also get a Planeswalker, I, which I think is a pretty easy uh, decision to make. Because we're going to get the Monarchy trigger, Monarch trigger. Um, we're going to Teferi here, get rid of one of them. I'll just do this now. And then I'll, I'll hold Solitude, which I can cast at any point. Yeah, and I can also do a Strix here. I feel pretty favored. I'm just worried about clock. Attack with everything. This is just going to exile this. 
okay, so with double planeswalker and like all these other things, the monarch, I feel like we've got this wrapped up. I just want to be cognizant of time. Okay, and this will flip in our end step. I want to flip it before end step so I can go ahead and um, uptick it. Or, um, yeah, so I can uptick it. Okay, that should trigger Tameo. Okay, Tameo is flipped. Now I'll plus Tameo. I'll play a land for turn and I'll pass. So Felia, it has to specifically be the card returned with Felia. That's how Felia works. It's not just any card returned. We, we figured that out from Lad last... Uh, and my opponent res says they respect the Drake. I'm just going to put the Solitude into play. I'll have no targets. My opponent will take two damage. They are dead on board. They are extremely dead. Like this game is over, over. I cannot imagine a card that could flip this at this point. We're so f overwhelmingly far ahead, but we do have 12 minutes to win. All right. So again, a lot of that was me playing slow just because I'm trying to wrap my head around this deck, which I would argue is probably the hardest deck to play in Legacy of the potential decks that you could play at Eternal Weekend, other than maybe like, you know, the Epic Storm. Um, I'm not making any sub more substitutions. Actually, Hydroblast would be good. I'm going to see if it'll let me make that substitution here. And I think Gilded Drake is... Maybe it's not the worst. They do have lots of creatures to target. Uh, Force of Will going down when they're already discarding me but it, it did stop the one ring um i feel like prismatic ending might be good here yeah i don't think it's gonna let me make any substitute because like you have to make your substitutions quickly if you want to make them yeah this is a perfectly serviceable hand it doesn't have uh any counter magic but it has plenty of removal if they like dark ritual out a scary uh card turn one and it's got like all of our colors uh Urborg actually helps us Chrome Mox. So as long as they don't thought seize me and then cast, you know, like uh, that one fatty. And our opponent's being very kind and chatty and stuff, uh, but I'm not taking time to respond to them just because I don't want to time out. All right, two mana. Please, Dark Ritual. Um, Shieldred. That's what I want to see here. Vexing Bubble. Yep, that's good against our deck. All right, um, no turn one play other than Vexing Bubble. I'll take it. I think we're going to go ahead and just get an island, which is an underground sea. Play our Tameo, get our card advantage online. Next turn, we have Brainstorm plus Fetch plus Flip Tameo plus get a clue. So assuming they don't kill our Tameo, we're in a pretty good position. But they still have four cards in hand, and they could be explosive. Three cards. Happy to see a land here. Dark Ritual. Okay, this might be Shieldred. The One Ring. Well, I can't do anything about this. It is scary, but um, I, I literally there's nothing in my deck other than bouncing it with uh, Teferi that does anything here. So we're just going to have to ha out card quality them. I'm going to start by creating my clue. Which thankfully, you don't have to do any combat damage or anything to, to do. You just attack. Yeah, the um, Skyclave Apparition is a card a lot of decks play that we're not playing here. So I think the card in Solitude, they could... I don't see a world in which they crack the bubble. They're going to be drawing so many cards. I think we put this back. I don't want Archive, even though I do want Mana Sources. Huh. Yeah, I have to make a decision here. I think I put back Solitude and I just mill it. No, whatever is the second thing I put back will get milled. Um, what is the weakest, most least useful card? Gilded Drake is good because we have Felia. Um, I think I put back this. Um, I mean, it's crazy, but I think I actually want to mill the Brainstorm here. So she flips. I want to plus her. And depending what our opponent does over the next turn or two, I may just concede. Uh, because, I mean, it's hard to beat turn two one ring. But if they don't have anything they can interact through our wall of plows, then, um, you know, we're going to be able to draw half our deck, which will outpace what they can do. All right, they drew two cards, so they've got five cards now. Wow, no plays. 
one thing I'm worried about is the potential for them to have um, opposition agent. So I do need to be very careful about this. What I'm going to do, I do want to get some more cards. Oh, no, I didn't need to do that. Ugh. I meant to tap it, not to uh, activate it, but I got lucky and they didn't actually have um, the card. I'll just get a Tundra since it taps for black anyway. And then we're just going to go blue. Black. Guard Tameo with our lives. Draw a card. Oh, no. Is this Bowmasters? It is. Bowmasters is good against our deck. Let's see where they put the ping. They do put it on that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and plow now. Luckily, um, they're 1-1. One, one. Well, it'll it'll be... Yeah, it'll just be a 1-1 one, one army. Yeah, so they're not going to be able to do any damage to Tameo. So we are still on track for the Tameo Express to drawing half our deck. Yeah, I'd much rather have to face Bowman there than face Opposition Agent. Because if you haven't noticed, our deck is like half fetch lands. All right, they're fetching. Dark Ritual, okay. Scary Town. Shielded is fine. I'll Drake her. Dark Ritual. What I'm worried about most is discard effects. They have like double hammer or something. That's fine. Yeah. That, I, I'm kind of surprised that they did that. They just must have so many cards. Okay, another bobble. That's fine. All right, like, this is not nearly as bad as it could be. So I'm going to lose some life here. Draw a land that really doesn't do anything. So I am going to plus here. I am going to Gilded the Drake. Like this, please. Now, options. Uh, we could incept Felia. I think, realistically, though, we're going to need to get rid of this Gilded Drake before combat. I am going to fetch while I don't have to worry about them um, doing things to me. Um, yeah, I think we just chill. I don't imagine they're going to have anything to stop the Drake. The main thing is we just need to ultimate here next turn. As long as we ultimate, I think we'll be fine and we'll be able to navigate out of this. So every time our opponent taps the one ring, they are going to lose a bunch of life. That's fine. Yeah, man. <laughs> Shieldred versus the one ring is great. I've never had one of these on my side of the table before, but it feels pretty good. This is a card that I've always been low on just because it's like you pay four mana and they have a Caracas or you pay four mana. Oh, they're playing another one. That's fine because I can solitude it next turn. After I've, uh, I'll solitude it and then I'll draw half my deck. I'll let them go to combat. It is a pity that um, I don't have time to just drake that as well, but I'm about to draw half my deck. So I'm not completely out of the woods. Because they could have um, a Bowmasters. But I'm going to take the chance that they don't have Bowmasters. Okay, they're cracking it. Sure. They'll lose another two life. Oh, they gain, oh, they gain it back. Never mind. <laughs> and the children on the children in action. All right. Yep. So I'm going to just gain it right back. Actually, you know, with uh, Tameo, I can just draw everything and gain life. But I think it'll be more powerful. Yeah, actually, I th I'm not afraid of Bowmasters anymore. White, what I'm afraid of is they have something to somehow stop this from exiling their shielded. I'm about to gain, I don't know, like 100 life. Yeah, so I, I think I have a uh, shield that I control, yes. They still have Vexing Bubble in play, so I can't force or... Yeah, wow. <laughs> like... MTGO took time to process that, but yes, I am now at 77 life. Um, I am going to, uh, I've played my land for turn. Let's see, is there anything to be done? I think I just go ahead and attack with Shieldred. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I clicked through it because I did. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry when that happens. I mean, I've got this game. It's just a question of like, can I finish in seven minutes? Yes, I can. Their one ring is dealing damage to them. They can't use it. We got 77 life. I don't imagine that they have a way, like some alternate win condition. If they crack that bobble out of desperation, I'm going to be so happy.
But yeah, they would be like dead on board had I attacked with shielded here. That's fine. It does not matter unless they have something else that's going to make me draw cards like Burning Inquiry. Okay, so Burning Inquiry does it. Um, yeah, but they're going to take a ton of damage as well. And I'm going to gain even more life. I don't think the order matters. The triggers are already on the stack. They're going to go to one, and then I should be able to figure out a way to kill them quickly. I don't have any direct damage. Like, I took out my Bowmaster from the deck. Okay, so they're choosing to go after my Solitude. So Shielder is going to remain in play. I don't even care what I draw, discard, any of that. None of that matters. I'm not even going to bother looking at my hand here. I think, actually, I'm just going to F... Should I F6? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll yield until the end step. And I'll assume that there's nothing I can do here. I just don't want to run out of time somehow. Because I feel like this game is totally locked. It is fun playing against brews like this, though. Like... I, like I encourage everybody, if you're thinking about playing some brew like this and having fun in the leagues, like this is the place for it. Crack it, please. That's death. Okay, good games. All right. Uh, well, that was those were interesting games for sure. I've never played against a deck with Starscream in it. Uh, childhood. All right. So let's go ahead and go to round two. We're one zero. All right, we're uh, back with an unknown opponent. And you know that against unknown opponents, I always like to keep Force of Will hands. This is a triple Force of Will hand. All right, Swamp Opener, which I think augurs well for us. We can handle most, like, black aggro strategies. I think we want the ability to fetch an island in case we need a brainstorm for some reason. Yeah, we get, like, our hand can do so many things right now. Okay, yeah, it looks like we might be up against uh, Rescam, which is fine. Like, we have an incredibly favorable rescam matchup, assuming I don't screw anything up. Thoughtseize. I don't think I'd do anything about this. They'll probably just take the brainstorm. Yeah, I'm not going to do an emergency brainstorm. I wouldn't be surprised if they took Solitude. If they're hoping to reanimate Troll. But I will force a reanimation effect if they take Solitude. If they don't take Solitude, I'll probably just... Let the reanimation happen because there are a lot of cards I could draw. Yeah, they took Solitude. So they have a very strong opening if uh, they do have a reanimation effect. Thoughtseize again. That is fine. My hand does nothing now, basically, but I'm not going to brainstorm now. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to surveil because we need to find action. I'm aware that they could have... Um, I'm aware that they could have... Oh, that is pretty good against their deck. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep that. And with Felia, that becomes steal one of your creatures each turn, which is pretty strong. So what I'm going to hope to do here is I'm going to hope they don't wasteland me because if they wasteland me, then we're in trouble. Reanimate. Uh, I do think this is a force of will. They're forcing back, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, if I just... They're reanimating. I can just drake this and race them, which I think is fine. The main challenge is, do they have days? They have days. We're in serious trouble. There is a way to test whether they have days, which I'm going to do right now. But testing whether they have days means we won't have the option of forcing. Yeah. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just fetch now and play Felia. I'm going to get blown out so bad if they have a wasteland to follow here that they somehow didn't play out. They do have days. Okay, so um, I'm going to let the reanimate happen. And then what I'm going to do, and, and this is a great thing in the comments. Like This is like a tiny interaction where I'm not sure what I'm doing, whether it's correct. But I think what is good to do here is to attempt a drake and assume that they don't have a second days or draw a third land. That would be great. Um, yeah, I'm just going to attempt a drake here. And I have force for their days, and I think we will win. Just based off of this alone. This interaction is really strong. So now, they are two swings from death. And I have force. If they have borrower. Borrower would be the best thing they could have here. They have a land. Animate dead on solitude is going to eat a force here. 
That is their last card in hand, and we're going to hit them twice. They still have the ability to surveil into something good. Yeah, so like any reanimate effect off the top, Solitudes, my troll. I am going to play this land out um, and have the option of surveilling because I want action in case they're able to deal with the troll. The worst thing, again, they could do is rip a Brazen Borrower. I'm not sure if they even play a main deck Bra Brazen Borrower anymore in their deck. Actually, there are so many cards that they could rip that would be bad for me. Like uh, the Maniac would be terrible because then they'd have a source of lifelink and they could get my Solitude back. Don't keep it. If they keep it, we're dead. Oh, they kept it. Okay, well, let's hope that it's just like a Brainstorm or a Ponder and not the... Re the uh, the miracle dude not the miracle dude this is the reanimate for solitude they're dead wow actually i didn't think about that i should have just let that solitude no because earlier it would have killed me okay so yeah that that felt good okay i'm not sure if they did that on error or if they were just like you know conceding essentially but if they knew what they were doing, they shouldn't have left that on top, you know? Like, they could have milled that away. So I think that they did do that on accident. They accidentally killed myself. And we take those. We take lucky lucky wins. Let's consult our sideboard guide, shall we? So, Reanimator. I'm taking out three Force of Wills. I'm taking out a Harbinger. Harbinger's not good against their deck because they have basic swamp and they can cast almost everything anyway. Um, Force, not the greatest, even though it was pretty good there. Just because, you know, you're two for one in yourself and... It's a close match, and we'd much rather just counter effectively all the spells we need to counter for the most part are um, cards that, you know, reanimate. So, also, I don't know if you heard me uh, belch there. I apologize. Excuse me. Excuse me? <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's run back. So, Guild of Drake, very good against reanimator. Um, let's go ahead and mulligan this no lander. This has very macabre. This has lands. This has vile. This is fire. I'm going to keep this, and I think we do want to keep the, the second plow. Um, sorry, recruiter. Eventually, we will draw cards that um, we can vile in. I'd love for them to go all in on a reanimation line. I would not love for them to have thought seize here. Yep. Nothing we can do about that. They're going to take the Drake, uh, the very macabre. Most likely. Plow is really good against their strategy, even if we don't have Fairy, though. Um, Plow is just so strong because it allows us to um, just keep their graveyard clear. All right. They could definitely have days here, which is an argument for Undercity Sewering first. <sighs> I think I'd just go get Basic Island, and we hope to find... A white source before we die. I don't want to get wasted out of the game. I do want to have some turn one play here. They've got five cards in hand. I'm worried that. Uh, okay, so there's an argument for just playing Undercity and chilling. Okay, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to chill, and then I can play one of my cards through with Days Protection. I need a land. If they waste this, it's not the end of the world. We'll just grab our basic island, and then we'll stick vial. Hopefully, stick vial. That is a great. Turn two, I'm very happy to see a cantrip rather than, um, you know, into reanimate when we have nothing we can do. And because almost all their creatures have powerful enters the batter, battlefield triggers, um, we just don't have a lot of counterplay. Like plowing is, you know, the, the band-aid on the bullet hole, so to speak. But it, it's not nothing. It, I mean, being able to plow is is pretty strong. Also, if we rip an um, over overmerk or overlord of or <laughs> overlord of the bell merc, uh, that card can immediately get us back our fairy macabre, which is super strong, super strong interaction in this deck. Okay, so now that's a great draw. It does suck that Solitude puts um, a card in the graveyard that they can reanimate, but. Recruiter, if they reanimate that, they can go get a um, a frog. If they, if they counter this, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, this is. I mean, the deck is called Esper Vile because of Aether Vial and its power. So we're always glad to resolve that. I'd still be scared of Wasteland at this point. I think we just let this happen. They may take Tamio. 
if they're crazy enough to reanimate when they're at three life, uh, reanimate a five drop, then they might be crazy enough to reanimate my Tameo, which would, you know, flip and come to my side of the table. They are drawing a lot of lands, which is good for us because their deck doesn't need a lot of mana to function. So we'd much rather them be flooded. There's another cantrip, which we don't hate to see. By the way, in my humble opinion, you should almost always fetch before you ponder, just in case you want to keep two of those cards. I guess in this situation, though, you could just keep like one and not have to shuffle. You know, it, I can see arguments either way. In your, uh, this is, there's obviously some context here, but what is your heuristic? This is a, a question I'm posing for the, the comments. What is your heuristic? Should you um, fetch before pondering or should you fetch you know, reserve the right to shuffle after you pondered. Cause they did, they were able to keep one card, but they might've wanted to keep two cards there. Is this a reanimate? Reanimating recruiter to go get frog is not a bad play by any means, but the fact that I've got so many removal spells. Yeah, that's fine. You can have my reanimator or my, uh, you know, recruiter of the guard and you can go get a frog and then I can plow that frog. All right. I am going to go get the other surveil land trying to line up land number three, trying to line up any action. Frog of my own wouldn't be the worst. Another Tameo would be great. Gilded Drake is good here because I can instant speed Gilded Drake and take their frog away after maybe they've even put some, uh, put some action into it. Okay, so I'm gonna always yield and I'm gonna yes. And we don't really have anything to do here. I think we just pass and chill. And instant speed Drake is so much better than uh, sorcery speed Drake. That they did uh, reveal a frog, right? That's what they got. Yeah. Okay. Frog it is. Sure. They can attack for one here. Oh, fairy macabre is our draw for turn. That's great. I'm just gonna pass. And so, the thing about instant speed Drake is like there's little they can do to interact with it. Um, they can technically fatal push. And if they do that, then I'll just plow. Okay, they're troll cycling. That's fine. One of the great things about uh, Fairy Macabre is you can hit your own graveyard and their graveyard. So let's say hypothetically they wanted to reanimate like, you know, I had a fatty in my yard that they wanted to reanimate. Well, I can do that and I can also get one of their fatties at the same time. So I would love for them to try to reanimate something here. Like Psychic Frog, Pitch something. Don't make me do it. Ah, all right. We're gonna float. I'm I'm just gonna plow now instead of draking. And my reasoning here is like, there are too many things that could go wrong with the drake, and I don't want to rely on that. I I can't let them connect with frog. So forcing to defend this would be fine with me. Okay. Now I do have solitude, which I can use if they are about to get through with combat. All right, so that was kind of like loose because what I could have done is I could have waited um, and until like after blocks and, and like if they were going to discard a card, they could have discarded it. Now, if the heads up thing is if they have a fatal push, they can use it here. That works. Okay, so I think they're down to one card. That's fine. I think I am going to solitude here because I don't know if I'm going to be drawing a white source and I don't want to deal with Excel that. All right. So yeah, we're taking one. Our uh, Gilded Drake fizzles. Yeah, it's not the worst. They've used only. They've used two thought seizes. I would be surprised if they play a third. So I think Gilded Drake is probably safe in our hands for now. So we can blunt their worst, uh, the the most dangerous, scary things they can do. I am going to take this up just because a lot of our cards. Are um, our five drops? All right, that's perfect. Um, yeah, I think given what's in our hand, I'm gonna go ahead and use this, play this out, and I'm just gonna go get a um, a card I can immediately deploy, which would be Tamio. Why can't I get Tamio? Oh, she has three three toughness. Oh, I didn't think about that. Damn. Yeah. Um. 
I mean, the safest thing to do is just get another fairy macabre. <laughs> so I'll just do that. Yeah, that was kind of a punt. Like, I didn't think about the fact that you couldn't get Tameo. Obviously still new to this version of the deck. So they know I have a fairy macabre now. But then they don't know I have two. So they could try to like overload it where they just reanimate and just work through the reanimation effects. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And I'm also going to hit, I think I'll just hit Solitude. I don't really care about regrowing it. I mean, you can technically regrow it, but it's scarier for them to, to regrow it. I'm winning this race, technically. I'm going to attack them. I don't care about them attacking me. All right, Overlord is going to be amazing next turn. I'm feeling pretty good. Most of their top decks are nullified by Fairy Macabre. The Miracle Dude would be a pain if they ripped it, even though I could stop it. It's still a 4-4. But Overlord is probably going to get Fairy Macabre back just to further insulate. Uh, the only thing they have in their deck to kill uh, Overlord is... Pro oh, please don't be a Brazen Borrower. That, that would be the worst. Um, I think we'd let this happen. I don't really care about that. Yeah, if it flips it, it's on my side of the table. So yes, they, they can get an extra draw every turn, but they have to be careful about it because once it flips, it's my Planeswalker. Yes, I'm going to use the ability. I'm going to draw. That's a great draw. Um, I've already used my Surveil Land. I'm just going to go ahead and play this. See what we can get. I would love to get like a Baleful Strix out of the yard. We found Solitude, which I think is worth picking up because I can... Just play it next turn. <laughs> yeah. And it keeps it out of the yard for them. This is, yeah, this is going very well for us. Yeah, there's no point in attacking here. They can no longer attack into me. I can see why this deck just like 4 0'd uh, against uh, Reanimator at Eternal Weekend Asia. And their deck was like slightly different from mine, but uh, I think probably like at least 70 of the 80 main deck cards were the same. Okay, they're drawing a card. If they rip a cantrip, I want them to cast a cantrip. Please make that mistake. Okay, they just played a land. All right, no reason to fetch here. They always know. Okay, cool. That is, yeah, this is a pretty good card. I think I'm going to go ahead and just play Solitude here and uh, clear a path to deal six damage. So we mill again. I am going to get back to the side. I'll get back another Fairy Macabre, I guess. I mean, this game is super over. They're at four. They can't even really reanimate anymore. This Brainstorm, I would love that. They're thinking about it like, oh, do I want to give them a Tameo? They're opting to chump, which is a great position to be in. Oh, no. They're attacking. The way they tap blue like that does make me think that they have like a cantrip that they're unable to cast just because they don't want to flip Tameo. Yeah, that I will happily take a flip Tameo. Thank you. And here you see why Fairy Macabre is like a hundred times better than Force of Will in this matchup. Like it's just like a slam dunk to take your forces out and put in Fairy Macabras. This card just carried us. Like there, we would be dead so many times, I think over like, because they would have returned troll, I think, and some other things we, um, we were able to hit our own solitude, which limited their options. That's fine. They know that we have at least one fairy macabre. I mean, Baron also bounces anything they play. Okay, so we get the flip Tameo. Again, friends don't let friends reanimate Tameo. It's a bad play, in my humble opinion. They're brainstorming again, so this is like sheer desperation. I'm not sure what they could find here that could even like attempt to keep them alive. All right, good games. Let's go to round three. We are 2-0. All right, we're back for round three against an unknown opponent. Let's see. They they played Painter like a year ago. So that's like all the information we have. But this is a perfectly capable hand. Uh, even against Painter, I'm going to keep it. Okay, Island Start. So a lot of people, when they're getting back into the game and they haven't been playing a lot, uh, they will just choose the top deck, which is Blue Black Reanimator, which I think is a card that you could probably rent on MTGO. Like, I don't know how expensive it would be. Um, 
Whereas some decks like this deck would probably be very expensive to rent on MTGO. You know, um, I think it's fine to just play out Tameo and, and it's also fine if they want to force me or something or, uh, waste me. I think that's fine too. I have basics. Um, I, I have the ability to get all three basics if I need to. All right, Saga. Saga, we don't really, because we're not playing Wasteland ourselves, we don't have a good way to deal with Saga. We just have to deal with the constructs that come out of it. Um, I'm going to play this land so I can fetch and surveil, and I'll just uh, go ahead and get my clue, and I'll pass. So what this is telling me, most likely they're on Blue Painter. And if they're on Blue Painter, I want to have the ability to um, Solitude. So Blue Painter doesn't play Days or anything like that, so we don't need to worry about that. They're probably just going to take it slow here and create a construct, which is fine with me. I'll go surveil. Uh, Blue Painter generally doesn't have anything to interact with your um, mana. I'll just get an Undercity here. Cards I'm looking for would be... Um, Belfal Strix would be the best. I will keep Plow for sure. You know, I'm kind of tempted to just tutor for... Uh, a uh, Baleful Strix because it's so good against their deck. I think I'm going to do that. And we still have Emergency Plow in Solitude if we absolutely need it. Like if they just untap and jam. Uh, I mean, it's very real possibility they could go get Grindstone here. This would definitely be a matchup where it would be good to have... Um, what's the name of the card? Um, Skyclay of Apparition in our deck. Okay, here's the first construct. These constructs are going to be big, but again, Baleful Strix uh, trades with them favorably. So they're getting kind of their two for one out of Urza Saga, which, you know, two constructs and uh, a card for one card. So it's it's kind of like a three for one if you pay the mana. And I'm actually happy to see them paying the mana here because it means we're not going to have to fight. Uh oh. Uh oh, something bad is happening. Vexing Bobble. Another saga. Okay. Vexing Bobble does kind of suck, at least for now. I will be able to flip Tameo next turn if I want to. Show and tell. I was not expecting that. I think most likely this is going to be a... I think this is a moment to put in Gilded Drake. I have no idea what kind of scary thing could be coming in here. But we do have Solitude if there's... Oh, <laughs> Jeweled Lotus! I did, or uh, whatever this is called, Covered Jewel. I did not expect that. I guess I'll take that. Let's see how many cards they can draw here. Because they get three, and then they can tap, and they can draw more. But the moment we get an attack through, we um, we get their lo Lotus. So I can definitely clear a path like by removing my Drake. So they have to get keep this chain going. Grim Monolith. Okay. Metamorph works. So it's going to become a Jeweled Lotus. Now they get to draw off the Jeweled Lotus. I haven't ever seen this deck in Legacy. It's a you know popular thing to be doing in Vintage where you've got infinity free mana. Let's see what they transmute. They're going to probably transmute into another one and get three more cards and three more mana. Paradox Engine. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think we're dead. They've got seven cards in hand. They've got three mana floating. Yeah, that untaps everything. Let's Let's, let's let it go. One ring. Okay, so we're just going to see their deck. I've F6'd. Like, um, I'm going to narrate as they <laughs> go crazy here because this is a first for the channel. Um, I actually don't think we're particularly well disposed to deal with this deck because we essentially kind of concede that we're not going to be that good against uh, non-graveyard combo uh, in the way we construct the sideboard. We do have four. Let's take, let's take a look at the sideboard while they're uh, doing their thing. So... Uh, I think bringing in the Force Negation is definitely correct. I think bringing in Prismatic Ending, uh, it, it does deal with uh, Vexing Bobble, but the Consigns are the main thing I'm excited about bringing in here. But even with those, I don't think we're like favored by any means against them, but Consign will be really good against their deck for sure. Yeah, now that I know that um, what they're doing, like I don't think Gilded Drake stays in. Uh, we'll definitely take out some number of 
uh, plows probably. I usually take out plows before solitudes because solitude can come in and be a beater and it can gain his life if in a pinch. Like solitude is just such an insane card and it's great to be able to play four of them. I miss playing four of them because I used to play death and taxes before I got sick of, you know, having my opponents do this to me <laughs> and not having any recourse. Uh, and Esperval marries, uh, it marries death and taxes sensibilities of like aether vial and value creatures like uh, recruiter of the guard with the ability to fight back on the stack. Look at the, how much mana they have. This is crazy. All right, Emrakul. So not a lot we can actually do against Emrakul. They still have their vexing bubble in play. Yeah. So we're dead. Um, I was hoping to see more of their deck. I mean, there's no reason not to just, you know, um, we do have the ability to, if Emrakul is their only win condition, you know, and they crack vial, bo Vexing Bubble for some reason, they have five, five cards left in their deck. Damn. Yeah. It is totally possible that like, I mean, they probably have four forces well in their hand or some huge number of forces, but they can't use those with Vexing Bubble out. Yeah. And we're not going to get another turn so we can concede. All right, cool. So, yeah, I think uh, plows definitely come out. I just think those are not useful at all here. Solitude is actually better than plow because you can actually solitude an Emrakul. You can also put solitude in our show and tell in case they are putting, like if you're desperate, and you need to stop them from putting Emrakul in. All right, so plows come out. I'm going to keep drakes in because draking Emrakul would be a dream come true. There we go. Um... We need three more cuts. I'm gonna make these. All right. I hope you can't hear my tummy grumbling. I have not eaten anything since I woke up. I woke up at like 4.30. I just it was like, I gotta record. I can't just lie here in bed. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. Uh, are there any other dead cards? I mean, Solitude's kind of dead-ish. Harbinger of the Sea. We saw plenty of basics. I don't think that that's gonna be an axis we wanna fight on. I don't want to cut a lot of blue cards. Baron is another thing that can deal with a resolved Emrakul. Um, it can also bounce Planeswalker's hand. I don't think that'll be relevant. Yeah, I think like probably cut a couple of solitudes. I mean, it, it's only helpful at the end of their combo. Gilded Drake is blue and pitches to force. All right, let's take a look at this hand. This is a force of will hand. It has lots of mana. Has Gilded Drake. Um, it does not have the combo, but I, I think getting a turn two overlord in play is totally reasonable. I'm going to keep this. And I'm just going to open archive. All right, so we're going to archive here. Hope to find another blue interaction spell or even really a blue card that we can pitch to force. That is not what we want. We just drew a card effectively <laughs> in what is likely to be a relatively short game. Every card uh, matters. Surveil lands are good. And I love the fact that we can play two of them with, you know, rarely encountering situations where they're in our openers. But, you know, most, we didn't have any one drops anyway. So, Vexing Bobble is quite strong against our deck. So, we do have two prismatic endings. We could get lucky. We did not get lucky. So, the options are, you know, uh, get our bell, bell mark down and potentially start drawing cards. Um, they definitely could just like ancient tomb into kill us or we could brainstorm hoping to high roll and hit the prismatic ending for the vexing bubble. I think I'm just going to bell mark here. Like let's not give their deck too much credit in terms of its explosiveness. I don't know if we saw an ancient tomb, but I will assume that they're playing ancient tomb if they are playing, um, Okay, my opponent just found the YouTube channel and subscribed. So, hi, opponent, if you're watching this. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, so, let's see what we get here. We've got a, a Psychic Frog, which I think uh, is pretty good for pressure. Yeah, I'm going to take that, and we can cast that next turn. There's nothing really to recruit her for because, again, I think it's probably a mistake to not play Skyclave. Because Skyclave would be good here. Like it's a multi-turn line, but we could Skyclave, and uh, their Vexing Bubble, and then we could have our Force back. Planar Nexus, interesting. I have no idea why they're playing that. 
Okay, so next turn they can show and tell or they can, you know, jewel. They can do a lot of things next turn. So next turn is going to be the critical turn. Let's see what we can get cooking over here. We do have brainstorm plus fetch, so we can get rid of like this recruiter is unlikely to be relevant. Uh, I would not mind putting back redundant uh, fetch land. All right, these are pretty terrible in my humble opinion. I think what we do, we have two options. One, we go ahead and get uh, frog out. Frog is a good card. I think we put back vial at this point. It's just it's too slow. If we could put back Vile in one of the recruiters, I think that's fine. Then we've got a, another fetch for next turn. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get... I don't think that they're playing... Um, it shouldn't matter. I, don't, I, I would be surprised if they're playing any um, stack interaction. Or, um, I'm sorry, removal. So I think we can go ahead and just frog here and then hope that we're not dead. If they don't have any action and they have to crack bobble, that's good for us. If they have to pass the turn after getting covered with jewel out, that's extremely good for us because then we have, you know, hard cast force off of the jewel. Because basically they get to draw three cards and then um, when we take control of it, which we should be able to do through whatever they do. Okay, Urza's Tower. Okay, so that's why they're playing Planet Nexus. They now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have eight mana this turn, which is a lot. Okay, there's six. There's Jeweled Lotus. Or not Jeweled Lotus, uh, Covered Jewel. Sorry, I'm going to like try to break the habit of mis miscalling these. Okay, and interesting. Okay, Transmute Artifact. They're going to transmute the uh, Grim Monolith. So there, there was definitely an argument instead of playing... F oh, wow, that's cool. That's a very cool card. Okay, so that's going to take out my frog, I presume. Well, all things considered, I, I'm not too sad about that. I can drake that. I mean, the fact that they used their, um, their one-shot mana, they still have a lot of mana. I think what I do is I'm going to brainstorm first, just see what I can find. And then I can drake if I don't find anything else good. Consign's great. Um, I think we put back, so the option, of course we could just take a hit from Chaos Defiler. It's not gonna, I don't think they're gonna kill us through combat damage. And then we could play out Vile, and then we could have Replicated Consign, and the next turn we could Drake. I think that's, I think that's the path forward. I can just pick one of these. And I can grab another Surveil Land as well if I don't need to uh, do anything here. So play this out. So if they have, you know, an artifact from hand, I don't, oh yeah, they could freaking sacrifice this and uh, destroy non-land permanent. Yeah, they could potentially destroy our uh, overlord, which is not the, the worst. Yeah, I mean, technically we could consign the trigger, but actually, you know what? Taking this away does take away one of their better uh, transmute artifact targets. Maybe that was the line. All right, we'll see what happens here. Again, first time playing against this deck. I'm not expecting to win. We're doing fine on time. Copy artifact. Um, so they're going to copy it. They're probably going to take out our Vile, I would imagine, or maybe our Overlord, which is fine. Then we're kind of in a predicament that's pretty good. I think we just have to let it happen. And then uh, we're going to have to kill the Drake next turn for sure. So we're going to take five here. Oh, please crack that bobble. Metamorph. <laughs> Man, this is so bad. It is not colorless. Yeah, we're going to just die to getting beaten down by these things, aren't we? If I just draked it. Even if I dro draked it, they could have just transmuted it and killed the opposing Castifiler. I think here, with three cards left in hand, I think I probably do need to consign this trigger. No, I'm not going to consign it just to protect the Aether Vial. Oh, they took my Aether Vial. Interesting. Interesting. I did not foresee that. I was like, surely they're going to have another cast of other. Uh, I think that's a pretty confident play. I wonder what card they could have that justifies having an Aether Vial around. Because they have to wait like four turns to be able to 
get one of those uh, transmute artifact guys in. Okay. So I'm going to surveil and we're going to have a blocker for their blocker, but we will need to deal with the Drake itself. And I took like basically all my creature removal out of the deck. I mean, that does give us hard cast force. I think we're past that. I need action. All right. Double Drake is not the worst because we could potentially take both of these. One, it's worth noting that if we block one with the other, it like basically we can just kill that. Is it greedy? Is it freaking high rolling to take both of them? I feel like if we take both, we're in a better position. I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. This, this might be like a, a catastrophically bad play because we're going to take three. We're technically kind of making ourselves dead on board. They're going to be able to attack and then they're going to be able to attack again. I think holding this back and blocking this, this does have trample. So we take four and then we kill that and we kill that and then they kill our vial probably, which is not the worst. We could consign the trigger. I think it's more responsible to keep consign up. So this might be a losing line. Leave a comment if you think I'm about to get destroyed. This is sacrifice an artifact. Yeah, so they could, if they have a third one, I, I, I bet you they just have one in their deck and this it wouldn't be a third. This is a copy. Coded jewel. And they don't have enough. I'm thinking of stupor. That really sucks for us, doesn't it? And there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, we're we're pretty dead. We're going to take eight here. Solitude is our the best draw on our deck at this point. Actually, I think Teferi would be okay. It would Actually, we would be dead if we drew Teferi. All right. Um, options. So this has Trample. So we could Recruiter and then get a... Um, yeah, but if we use the Gilded Drake, we put ourselves dead. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this out. I'm going to go ahead and, and just take a look. We're going to go white. Um, we're going to recruit. We're going to take a look in our deck and just see if there's anything that I'm like somehow forgetting that can bail us out here. The fact that that is trample is pretty, pretty bad for us. We get a psychic frog. Not in love with psychic frog here. So let's say hypothetically they do play out the uh, copy artifact guy. They have plenty of mana to do so. Um, it's a color. It's a colored spell, so we can't um, stop it with consign. Solitude. Unfortunately, we don't have white card of pitch anymore. I think we take Strix. So, let's say hypothetically we we cast Strix, then we uh, violin. Drake during their turn, their Drake has uh, uh, they they can still copy it and destroy something, but their other Drake will have uh, summoning sickness. I think that's like the only thing we can do here. So I am going to go ahead and get a um, just any blue land. It doesn't really matter. They're not going to be playing uh, anything. I don't think that'll interact with our mana. So we're going to go blue black. We're going to Strix. Now we're totally naked if they just decide to like. Do, do some other combo. Um, that doesn't help us. Okay, so we're going to basically just hope. Um, I mean, if they crack the bobble, that would be insane. I don't think they're ever going to do that. They could have something nasty coming in off this file that we can't interact with. Just trying to make it through the turn. If they pass the combat, I will go ahead and Drake so I can have an untapped cast of Filer. Here comes the copy artifact. Do I let this resolve first? I think it doesn't matter. If they target my vial, then I can just, yeah. But they're going to choose Chaos of Valor. Okay. I think I have to do this now. And I'll just take this one that can actually attack. They can target my Chaos of Valor, And then they can use that to kill my Baleful Strix. But when it dies, yeah, so if they kill mine, then I can kill theirs. <laughs> and then they can kill something else. And then we can figure out how to deal with Drake's. We're going to be at zero life, actually. We're dead. 
Um, yeah, because I fetched, I had to fetch there to be able to cast that. So I, I think we're 100% dead here. Not that we really had much of a fighting chance. Once that vexing bow wall resolved, I, I knew we were going to be in trouble. Um, and wait a second, did I? I didn't have an option to force vexing bow did I? I'll have to check because forcing vexing bow probably would have been worth doing just in case we drew. We didn't end up drawing another one. Okay. They went for my recruiter for some reason, which makes you think they have more stuff going on. Because why would you go for a recruiter when you could go for the Strix? Oh, they're not attacking. Interesting. All right. Well, we do have like a crazy small chance. Um, I think we do use this ability. Okay. We have hardcast force. They will just kill us. Uh, this the status quo is them just killing us, essentially. So we kind of need them to make a mistake. Here's what I think we do. I think we attack with Chaos Defiler. Then when it dies, we can... No, I, I, yeah, I just think we're dead. I can't even put Yorian into play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put Yorian in the hand. I think it's stronger than holding up Force. Because I do want to cast Yorian next turn, if there is a next turn. And then um, I'm just going to pass. But they should see that there's like a lethal attack and they should go for it. But if they hold back for some reason, that'll be a gift. I don't think that's likely. And I should have probably played out of land, even though, um, you know, just to fetch. I've already actually used my um, both my surveil lands. I'm talking a whole lot as I lose, <laughs> like from so many different angles. But um, let's see what they do here. The one ring. I'm going to attempt to counter that and I'm also going to replicate it. And maybe this will spook them. Replicate with one copy. Same targets. The one ring would be, you know, even worse. We're still dead when they attack. They should just attack with both the drakes. They might think we have some instant speed shenanigans, but we don't. Wow. They did not attack. Okay. So this is an argument in favor of just like appearing strong. Doing whatever you can to appear strong. Right? Like we are not in a position of strength by any means. They absolutely should have attacked, but they're probably like thinking like, why are they even playing the game? Why didn't they just scoop? <laughs> if you're watching this, uh, oh wow, that's freaking insane. Okay. And this is, this is what we wait for. You know, we wait for things like this. So let's, let's be slow. We've been given a gift. Let's not squander it. Okay. I'm pretty sure the play here is just bounce Drake to my hand. All right. We drew a land. I am going to play out of land. Uh, just, you know, I'll probably never use it, but. Oh, actually, hmm. If we Drake here, we might die. Because we'd be giving them a second Drake. Um, we could Drake the Drake. <sighs> Draking the Drake. Yeah, I just need to be more decisive. I think the correct thing to do is just to hold here. They have to have something. They didn't attack last turn. I don't think they're likely to attack now. Next turn, we have instant speed Yorian, which will be very strong. I think we're probably still dead. But um, we probably won't die from combat. They could absolutely attack Teferi here and trample over the Chaos Defiler. So they are up to four on their Vile now. So <laughs> they're multi, you know, they're, oh, wow, that's so much mana. They might be Emrakul territory here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, monolith. So they've got one, two, three, four. Okay, there's a lot of mana. What are they doing? This could be the jewel, the uh, coveted jewel, which I'd be fine with. Yeah, that's coveted jewel. They're going to draw a bunch of cards. We can't interact in any meaningful way. I'll feel a lot better once we have the uh, Yorian on the table and have force mana up. So if we if they for some reason pass, I'm absolutely gonna attack in with the Chaos Defiler to get that coveted jewel. Draw three cards. That player draws three cards and gains control. Holy cow, that's so strong if we can get an attack in. We're down to eight minutes on clock, but so they're down to ten. We're both thinking like crazy here. They're adding even more mana. They could have any number of different things. Ottawara, pretty catastrophic. Nothing I can do to stop it. They don't have the mana to recast it. Next turn, they will be able to vile it in. Ottawara also stops the destroy trigger. Now I'm 
pretty dead if they attack. Are, are they going to attack me? Yeah, and that's the game. We fought. We lost. Good games. All right. So, yeah, uh, after a strong start, we encountered a combo deck that we'd never encountered before, even though we had the tools to potentially win. Um, I did not win. And I think that a lot of it comes down to just being unfamiliar with that deck. Like, I, I had no idea that they played Auto War, for example. That wasn't on my radar. Wait a second. Didn't we already play this person? I'm pretty sure we already played this person. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be a total cheapo, and I'm going to go and see what they were playing from the replay. I'll be right back. All right, this is the first time I've ever faced the same player in the same league, uh, but this is indeed the reanimator opponent that we played earlier. Um, I don't think this hand is strong enough, even though it has a vial. Uh, and my reasoning is, hmm. I mean, we do have flip Tameo, but we just don't have any removal, and I don't like the fact that it's a one-lander. And Harbinger does nothing against their deck. I'm going to mull this. Okay, this hand is a little bit better in the sense that it's got a lot of land at least. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put Harbinger on the bottom. And uh, probably just going to open Surveil Land here. Open Sewer, <laughs> as I like to say. Just because everybody loves the visual of open sewers. All right, our opponent has uh, no play. Turn one. So I do think, I'll just get the white source. That is definitely not something we want. So we kind of drew a card. They could definitely have a daze here, but I think for the sake of momentum, we shouldn't just chill. Okay, we drew another land. Now I'm thinking maybe we do chill because what if we, what if we get dazed and we just sit there and have nothing to cast? Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chill. Are we going to cycle? Oh, they're brain, end step brainstorming. I think that's a, almost always a mistake, but that could mean that they have a troll that they can cycle. So the, the post board games are going to be a lot, a lot better. Even though we 2 owed this opponent earlier, um, it is the best deck in the format, and I wouldn't be surprised if we lose game one. There's the Psychic Frog. That's fine. If we find a white card, we will go ahead and uh, solitude that, probably. That is a great answer to a frog. So they could have double days here. They could have force. I'd love to draw a white card and just be double insulated against it. Because they may untap and have fatal push. I don't know if they pay, play a fatal push main deck. Oh, they're forcing. So they have a lot of respect for this. But it's safe to do because they are going to connect and draw a card next turn. Next turn, we're almost certainly playing the uh, Overlord. We will eventually get to hard cast solitude mana, but even then, like <laughs> there's days that uh, that's pretty scary. We have beaten double frog. Uh, if you watch the beginning of the video, I beat doomsday on double frog and they had turn one frog into turn two frog. So it can be done. It's just hard, especially hard when they can just draw like a archon of cruelty and throw it in the yard and then reanimate it. They did put Metamorphosis Fanatic in the graveyard. Scary. And if they have a way to reanimate them, uh, okay. They're just putting a bunch of damage on me, which I think is kind of crazy. But again, they did Brainstorm and then not Shuffle. So they got an imperfect Brainstorm. So I think this might just be loose play. Wow, we're flooding hard. Uh, okay, so I think if we... White or black. Let's go ahead and see if we can find a, a white creature that we can exile sol with solitude. I want to get at least one of these frogs off the table and I think I want to do it this turn just to reduce the likelihood that they draw a force. We did find a recruiter here. So recruiter next turn could, oh, we can just get Strix back. I mean, they definitely could have a daze though and that'd be embarrassing. I think I'm going to go for it. That's the, the play to win strategy. Uh, getting uh, Solitude back is playing to not lose. So let's go get our lands. Uh, and I'm, I mean, they're going to daze so hard if they have a daze or if they have a fatal push, any number of things. Good, it's Hundra. And let's get dazed. Wow, we didn't get dazed. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, um, this is going to be two for one either way. 
A two for one into a two for one. So this is how we win. We 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 value. And if they uh, do have to attack with that psychic frog, I mean, they might be scared to attack, which would be fantastic. But I think like that would be crazy not to attack here. Even if it dies, they can just metamorphosis fanatic and get it back. Like any reanimation spell gets the metamorphosis fanatic, which gets everything else. They can even chain multiple metamorphosis fanatics. Yeah, I think what they're going to do here is they're going to attack both. I'm going to block one. They're going to reanimate metamorphosis fanatic and they're going to get their frog back. But I'm going to deny them a card in the process. It'll be so much better once I have the... Uh, Cause this also simultaneously like gets value and it also digs for your fairy macabras. Yeah, so here we go. This is what the deck does. This is the new face of legacy right here. Oh, well, they're getting my overlord back. I didn't even think about that. I didn't realize I even had one in the yard. If I can somehow bounce that to my hand with the fairy, that'll be insane. I think that was a misplay. They should have gotten metamorphosis fanatic and then gotten their frog unless they have a second reanimation spell or I guess they just have a second frog. Well, oh, yeah, they got the frog off of Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So th that was not a crazy play by any means. But I don't know. They could have just... <sighs> um, They didn't have days last turn. I think I just Solitude here and, and hit one of them. Or maybe I... Do I need to hit the Overlord? I might have to hit the Overlord, sadly. The other alternative is that I... Oh, I can just get Strix back. That's pretty good. They are going to be able to get a card every single turn, though. Or I could just cast my own Overlord, get back a White Source, and then, yeah, I think that's the play. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and play my own. And they, they, they certainly could have drawn a Daze here, but they didn't. I guess I'll use the ability. I'll get back a Recruiter. I'm going to go ahead and Solitude now. And we're going to hit our own Overlord. They're still going to be able to draw lots of cards. But they actually don't have that much life. They're frogs. Neither of them are big enough. They're going to have to jump one or both of them to be able to do, to uh, deal combat. Like, they're not going to be able to attack through this because they've only got three cards. They may have a reanimate here on Solitude. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that, sadly. And that means that I'm not going to be able to use it on them. But I do have a ton of life now. Yeah, they're going to draw two cards. I'm feeling extremely far behind. Extremely. And then they have a, an additional thing they're going to do. What is this? Anime Dead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just like, how do we beat this? Like, how, how would a deck that was not basically designed to beat this deck beat this deck? That is the question I'm asking to Wizards of the Coast. I like the little, the cute little heart thing for the lifelink. Yeah, we're, we're super dead. I'm trying to think of a sequence of draws that could get us there. Obviously, if we had a sweeper in our deck, but we don't have a sweeper in our deck of 33 creatures. And even if we had a sweeper, like they could just get two things back really easily. So, yeah. We're going to see what I draw, and then I'm going to concede. Oh, actually, um, options. We recruiter. We get Felia. Felia can blink solitude back to us. Can we survive long enough? I don't think we can. They're going to draw three cards here. They have a force. All right, we're done. Yeah, that was just savaging. They they had one, two. They only had two reanimate effects, but then this was also a reanimate effect. Or I guess, yeah, technically four reanimate effects. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we know the drill. We're going to bring in Fairy Macabre. I'm glad I'm practicing against this deck, even if like the, the player playing it seems to be relatively new to the deck. Um, yeah, we'll just take out Forces. Everything else is good. We're kind of pre-boarded for this, other than the fact that we don't play. Like some people were playing a main deck Fairy Macabre, but the card is just so terrible if they're not on specifically a reanimation strategy. Like It's not even that great against lands, um, which is where Surgical is is not the worst. All right, so we got to win two here. This is a snap keep. We don't have anything going on, but the fact that we can stop their um, a frog opening and uh, reanimator opening, I think, is pretty strong. I'm going to 
play this out and I'm just going to pass. I want this. This is why fetch lands are so good. Like it's a one lander with fetch lands, but we have lots of free spells and we can prevent those free spells from being dazed. It's fine. I do think we surveil to maximize looks at a uh, second land because we definitely want a second land. And then if they wasteland us, they wasteland us, but we're not going to play on basics. And I am going to be getting a black source because I would like to cast this frog. That is a, an above average draw. I'm going to put it on top. We could be brainstorm locking ourselves here. I'm going to attempt it. I have a lot of fetch lands in my deck. If they daze it. Oh, okay. That's not terrible. That's not terrible. Okay. So uh, we'll put back cards we can't cast. Uh, I'm going to put back a recruiter of the guard and a gilded rake. Play out a land. I'll pass. We still have days protected solitude. And what I'll do is I'll okay, no play. That's great. All right. I'm going to attempt to psychic frog here. If they daze this, they could potentially reanimate it, which would be pretty scary. Hmm. The other card. Okay. Hear me out. I think we don't frog because I think it's very likely that they're able to kill our frog and that gives them a reanimation target. And we don't want to waste a fairy macabre getting rid of our own uh, frog. I'm just going to chill. And this also gives us uh days protected solitude. This could be our only window to do frog. If they have wasteland, they don't. Baragoyf. I would like to guild the drake that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to flash in Felia. I'm going to draw a white card next turn in case I need it for um, Solitude. We'll see whether they daze. They should daze if they're smart. Yeah. All right. So they had the daze. Now we're going to draw. I'm going to attempt to guilt the Drake. They may have a second daze. And if they have a third daze for Solitude, then we're really screwed. They have a force here. So they don't have a Days is what I'm reading. Now I think we probably just have to go ahead and do this. All right. Yeah, it was expensive to get rid of that, but we got rid of it. The other option, of course, would have been to play a frog, uh, but that would have gotten days. And I, I'm, they're almost certainly going to reanimate a frog if we put it on the table. Another Barragoyf. We can't do anything to stop it. Has Death Touch. Very scary. So if we draw a land, we can burn it. We didn't draw a land. I'm going to go ahead and do black, blue, frog. I don't think we can significantly reduce the number of types through Fairy Macabre. We could go after Ponder. Doesn't feel like a winning line. I think what we do is we let them attack, let, let them get their benefit, and then we um, frog and hope to... Let's see, Is with Psychic Frog, we could potentially jump the frog and get rid of stuff that way. I'm just trying to think if there's a way we can kill this thing. So they have instant sorcery. So we could Fairy Macabre, give it double flight, and then they would just have instant in their graveyard, and then it would die to Psychic Frog. I like the idea... And that prevents them from being able to search. They might have fatal push. But then, okay, once they go to combat. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. So the options. We could Fairy Macabre. Um, take out their Ponder. Take out one of their Dazes. Doesn't matter. And then um, we could exile our graveyard. And then it's a 1-2. And then we'd have to still discard a card to Psychic Frog. And then we'd also lose our frog. I don't think that's correct. I think I'm just going to take the damage. Um, is it correct to... Is it correct to shrink it? I don't think so. I'm not going to shrink it. I'm just going to take the full damage. And trust that like having the flexibility of being able to jump the frog multiple turns in a row, if necessary. So you may be wondering, oh, can't you just fairy macabre whatever they return? No, you can't. So they can get troll back. Yeah, I feel like getting cute with Psychic Frog there is a huge risk. What we really want to do is just find a land. This does give us the ability to get us... Uh, I'm going to attack first. 
Overlord does run the risk of uh, putting even more types in the graveyard, but we can exile as many of those as we need to. Let's see, see a land, please. Ah, Gilded Drake. Okay. Now I'm going to attempt to Drake. If they had Fatal Push, they probably would have used it by now. They have a, a hard cast days. That is sad. Yeah, uh, we might lose. Um, let's think about this. So they have one, two, three, four. <laughs> they have four types in their graveyard. Um, yeah, sadly, I think we just need to wait. If we find a land, we can bounce it back to hand and buy ourselves a turn that that way. But yeah, Baragoyf is a very strong creature. Um, I'm probably going to be playing two of them in blue-black tempo. Don't worry, there will be lots of more blue-black tempo videos on this channel. Uh, I'm experimenting with this as a potential kind of like... Uh, but I mean, the fact that we're losing against it, 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 it's not a slam dunk against this deck. Like there's... Uh, blue black tempo has, I think like a 53% win rate at eternal weekend against it. Oh, that sucks so bad. I feel like we're like super duper dead. Best thing they can do is like reanimate something and give us a target for our fairy macabre. And I definitely could have like exiled a bunch of cards there, but I don't think that's the right call either. Maybe it was the right call to just remove like solitude from our graveyard. But if we, if we draw a white card and if they don't have a daze. Let's see what they put. They put a frog in their hand. Yeah. I was going to say we could solitude. Oh, wow. They're not, they're passing. Interesting. Land. Felia. Okay. So I'm just going to go for the combo here. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I just need to, I'm going to attempt to overlord here. They're almost certainly going to counter it. Um, and then we're pretty dead, but if they don't, then yeah, they're just forcing it. Okay. I'm going to play it out. But I, I think we're like 5% to win here. They're entombing. That's fine. I've got that covered. All right. Uh, so they didn't suck your frog so they can entomb. But two swings from the Baragoy from we're dead. So we draw land. We have Baron. That my, my hope is that they go all in on. Oh, they're entombing again. Interesting. Why entomb twice? I guess their hand was terrible. They had exactly the right amount of uh, interaction to stop us. They pitched the frog. Yeah. So they don't even have frog in hand. So if we deal with this, if we find like a solitude off the top or something, we are gaming. It's a frog. And we did. Well, uh, I'm going to most certainly attract to that. And I'll also hit our kind of cruelty while I'm at it. <laughs> Seem like good things to hit. Okay. And we did goes to the graveyard. We're going to take five damage here. We've got one draw step to find an answer. I mean, we could technically chump with Felia. They're going to get a card back. Let's see what they mill. Oh, they're not. What? Why wouldn't you use the ability? That doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, they didn't flip a creature. That's why. Never mind. Sorry. And, oh, yes. All right. We are still surviving. They're going to recast this, but. We are going to have Felia up by then. And uh, we have a chump blocker. And this is how we claw our way back into the game. That's what this deck does. It claws its way back into the game. Metamorphosis Fanatic. Insane top deck. Okay. So what are they going to target? They can't cast both Metamorphosis Fanatic and uh, the other card here. Let's pop out their graveyard to see what they're targeting here. Get rid of that, and I'm going to get rid of their other troll too, I think. Fairy Macabre, so good against their deck. I mean, they still have a 4-4 lifelinker, but at least we're not like completely dead. If we had been able to resolve any of our spells earlier, I, I feel like we'd be in a decent position. It sucks that I have to do this, but I do think it's correct to go ahead and plow, plow the Baragoyf. <sighs> yeah, I think uh, while we know they don't have removal for it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plow this. Yeah, it sucks that we are gated on white mana because um, I would love to get Felia down. Yeah, I, that was a free attack. I should have attacked there. They have 39 life. We have 11 minutes on the clock to win two games. We're going to have to do it quickly. My hope is that they just don't care that much about their um, 
about like they they just see the writing on the wall that I'm gonna win. Yep, there's Barrowgoyf. Okay, that's fine. They can get a surveillance. Um, I think we do. We pass. Yeah, we're just gonna pass, and I'll have surveil land up, and I'll also have. Uh, I'm gonna definitely block here. I have Felia who can jump in if they somehow draw a fiddle push. Barbarian, you bought us vital time. Okay, land land for the turn. So we're gonna go get a white source here. We're getting close to uh, Harkas Solitude mana. That's a great card. Oh, I totally forgot to put Felia in. That was totally dumb. That was totally dumb. I got so excited about the, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If I played Felia, that would be pretty strong here. I'll just, uh, I'm going to just play it out and no, I'll, I'll save it as a surprise. No, they have hard cast force. I need to put it out. Don't want it to get forced. All right. Next turn, we have the ability. We're going to trade with this potentially, and then we have the ability to so they're gonna probably surveil again. Yeah, that was so dumb. I could have uh, I could have drawn a card, and uh, if this is a fatal push, I'll be super duper sad. That's fine. They should attack. Okay. Recruiter. Let's think about this. So I think we recruiter. Let's not tap all our white. Now we tapped all our black. <laughs> all right, that was dumb. All right, uh, so let's go get... Um, we could get a Psychic Frog. We could get a... Do they have a Swamp? They do have a Swamp. Um, I think we just get another Strix. Let's go get another Underground Sea here. I'll play the Strix. I doubt that they have um, Toxic Deluge in their deck, but if they do, it's it's pretty bad for us. Um, there's not really any benefit to attacking here. I'm just going to chill. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get Yorian and I'll win that way, but I need to play quickly because I've got to deal a lot of damage here and they don't seem to be conceding. That's fine. And also I have to take my kids to school, <laughs> unfortunately in a few minutes because these games have been going kind of long. Uh, so I might have to just like drop this one due to time. Best draw on my deck is Gilded Drake. I've already gone through two of them, but I have one more in there. I would love to have a Baragoyf on my side of the table. All right, we are just going to block it. This makes life nice and easy for us. They gain a little bit more life. Okay, they have nothing else going on. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw here. This is a great card. I'm just going to go ahead. This, this will help me uh, win the game quickly. Let's get a... Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Another Strix, maybe? Yeah, seems good. I'll just play it. Blue Strix. It's too bad Bellmark can't get Bellmark, because I would definitely just get a Bellmark there. I'm going to attack with everything. Let's go and flush th that. I'm going to take the damage. Bellmark's back. Instep. I'm not going to play out Vile. It just creates too many triggers. And I can go get Yorian if I need to, but I think I'll just very quickly attack and pass. Okay. I'm going to get back a... We can't use it yet, but we'll be able to use it eventually. They have so much life, we're just, we need to hit them quickly and repeatedly. Borrower is fine. Oh, damn. That actually represents death. I'm so dumb. They can flash in the borrower. I didn't even think, it didn't occur to me that they could have the borrower here if they flash it in. Yep, they got it. Uh, that was just a total misplay. Like, I was like, what can I lose to? Yeah, I can lose to freaking borrower. Um, I was going to lose on time anyway. So I, I'm going to chalk that up to the deck uh, being totally fine and me just being bad at piloting it and also having, like, time pressure and other things going on this morning around me. Um, I totally think, in retrospect, what I should have done is just get back a Psychic Frog because <laughs> Psychic Frog can grow pretty quickly or get back another Strix or something like that, you know? Like, getting back the Solitude when I had nothing to go with it was just a boneheaded play. So, uh, yeah, like, that definitely could have gone the other way. Um but the deck felt fine considering the power of what they were doing. They had lots of really powerful things going on. So uh, I'll be back after I drop my kids off and I'll play the final round. 
All right, we are back for the final round, and we are against a likely uh, green player. I didn't look at their full list. Seems like an exceptional keep. <clears throat> so the, the key to beating these decks is going after their actual targets. Let's take a look. This is what they're likely playing. They have been playing Stifle Knot, uh, but you can see that um, this is just white of the Reliquary. Instead of going after Dorks, which is how I would go after if I was like a tempo deck, you go after their actual threats. Um, so I'm going to keep this for sure. And I wish, uh, I've already wished my opponent good luck. They're mulliganing to six. They could be on a different deck for sure. But I do think it's correct to go ahead and open. I think I'm going to open. Like if they're on this, there's no reason to fear. Uh, but they have played Stifle Knot in the past. I think I'm going to go ahead and get the Swamp here just because I do want a basic, and then I'll play out the vial. Because if they are on Stifle Knot, it's absolutely catastrophic. If they're on something else, it doesn't matter. I'll have all my colors. But I, I don't want them to be able to stifle my fetch. Red. Okay, well, I'm glad I got the basic there. Vexing Bobble. So I think they're probably on, they could be on Painter or they could be on Moon Stompy. Those are the two decks that people play a lot of. So I will always yield to this. And I am going to plus it, and we are gonna, I think, so we have the option of just Psychic Frogging, which just solos their deck. Um, we also have End Step Felia, and then we can Frog next turn. I like that because I can get the trigger off Overlord. I don't think they're likely to have anything that interacts with what I'm doing. If they do play like a, some must stop creature, I can deal with that here. So you always play the Felia first because the moment she attacks, she can get extra value off the Overlord. Okay, they're just passing. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a bolt for my Felia, a bullet for my Valentine. She's a doggy after my heart. All right, does she survive? That is great for us. So we're gonna take up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see what I draw here. A land is great. I can fetch basics now, which I probably will. On that note, it probably makes sense to go ahead and fetch a basic island here, just because uh, I can keep Tundra up. And I do want to have basics. Uh, I would hate to get mooned out of the game, but that is certainly something that can happen from here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna play this out. My opponent may be familiar with this card. If they're not, that works to my advantage. So I would definitely take a, oh, uh, I guess I'll take a Tameo. That seems good. I'm going to go ahead and attack here. This is going to blink this for exceptional value. I am going to go ahead and play this out. I, I don't think there's a single card in their deck that blows this out. It'll be nice to be able to uptick her potentially. Okay, we're going to get the trigger here. If we find a different two drop, we can get it. We are going to use the ability. We'll get back Felia, which is totally respectable. Fine. We can flash her in uh, off of Vile if we need to, or we can put the Psychic Frog in. But I feel extremely favored here. We have a 5-5. Five, five, we have a 3-3. Three, three. Um, we can potentially... I'm not sure what we would blink here. The fact that we have two plows in our hand is great. If we don't... Uh, if they do blood moon us and we don't have white, we still have the possibility of finding one of our five uh, solitudes off of Overlord. They could be on... Uh, okay, so one deck that plays this that they could be on that would be a problem for us would be if they're on um, Ruby Storm. And if they're on Ruby Storm, we don't have any counterplay currently. We just have to hope that they can't like just win in one turn with Ruby Storm. And that would be a reason that they'd be thinking really hard here. The other reason that would be more favorable would be they're thinking about how they can potentially win this. Okay, they are on Ruby Storm. That's bad news. So if they're able to win here, we're screwed. But usually they can't win immediately. They can create a bunch of dragons, but we can actually potentially get through a lot of dragons unless they get like a ton of dragons. If they pass the turn, can we kill them? See, we can do three, eight, eight damage plus Psychic Frog plus four cards. 
we can do 12 damage. That's not enough. Well, it's actually 13 damage that we can potentially do. All right. Show me the bonus round. I'm not going to F6 because I don't want them to know I don't have a force. They've seen that I have Brainstorm in my deck, so they should probably presume that I have force. If they do Jeskai's, Jeskai's will, what I'll do is I'll vile, and then I'm going to dump my entire hand to Frog so they don't get any mana for it. Ruby Storm is a problematic deck for us to face, but we do, we are going to bring it in. Oh, they're cracking the bobble. Okay. That doesn't help us immediately, but increases the likelihood of us being able to counter some of their stuff next turn. They have seven mana available. They have a lot of Storm, but they don't win through Storm quickly. Like they usually have to go get Grape Shot or they have to do like a convoluted line where they get black mana, which they don't generally have access to so that they can tendrils us. They could mana morphos to generate that mana, for example. I just have to trust that the value that we've put on the table is enough to get us there. Pass in flames. Okay, so they can bring back a lot of stuff. That's fine. So they can generate a lot of storm here. Seething song. Okay, they're up to seven. They could definitely put lethal dragons in with the current amount, uh, but they're going to need a... Um, they're going to need a burning wish. There's the burning wish. I think they're going the storm line. Grape shot. Okay. This is good for us because it means that they don't have a plan to immediately kill us. Okay. So can they recast this? Are these all going at us? Yeah, they are. So they, they, I think they're planning to grape shot us twice. Would that be lethal? It's exiled. No, wait, it's not exiled. It's going to go in their graveyard and they can cast it again. This might be just enough. They have nine storm. They're about to do 10 damage. Yeah, that's, that's slightly more than what they need. So they can flash this back and kill us. It was disappointing that we died despite like having an outstanding opening, but that's what you get when you try to play a fair deck into a combo deck. Uh, tempo probably could have handled this because uh, it's, it's worth asking, like how would tempo have done here? I think tempo is pretty strong. Um, in this matchup, what happened? That was weird. Didn't, can't they just flashback grape shot? Oh, it doesn't affect it because it wasn't cast. So they would have had a grape shot and then they would have needed need one more mana. Holy cow. That is so lucky. Okay. So, uh, so the, the way past and flames works is it doesn't see the cards that are in your grave. It only sees the cards that are in your graveyard when it's cast. So they were one mana short of killing us. Because they would have had, or actually maybe two mana, because they have to flash back past some flames, which I think costs five. Okay. So, plows come out. Okay, let's talk about what comes in. Hydroblast, most definitely. Uh, Prismatic Ending is pretty weak against them. It can take uh, Taj, or whatever, Raj, I think is his name. So, these are cards that we'd like to bring in, for sure. These are cards that can come out, for sure. I think solitude can come out for sure. I think like a situation where we're trying to beat their um, many, many uh, dragons, that's like a losing situation. <sighs> Vile itself, uh, notably not a blue card. I think drakes can come out even though they're blue. So that means we can bring one card back in. Fairy Macabre is only good specifically if they take a past uh, flames, past and flames line. So we can bring this back in. We could also keep a single solitude in the deck to tutor. We're almost never going to get a chance to <clears throat> Drake like their, their Raj or if they're playing Bergy, which I'm not even sure if these decks play Bergy anymore. Yeah, I think it makes sense to just have an additional blue card. Hmm. Yeah, we, we just like are basically giving up completely against their dragon plan and we're trying to stop the dragons. We can still kill some of the dragons. They're tokens. They can be bounced out of existence by Felia. They can be bounced out of existence uh, by Baron or, or Teferi. But it's very hard to actually do that. Like we would need a miracle um, to be able to like get enough dragons out of play to survive. This is a strong hand. I'm going to think for a while so that they don't realize um, that it's like, so they think it's kind of a shaky hand, but actually this is a snap keep in my mind. I'm going to keep this. And so our game plan is going to be take it slow. No, we're not going to take it slow. We're going to try to stick a psychic frog, I think, 
turn two. But I am going to keep consign up. Double consign. That's great. I'll just play my Tundra and I'll pass. I should have played Flood Strand there because I, I want to be able to fetch and get card selection. That was a misplay. Burning Wish. Let's just let this resolve. We'll counter whatever they get. Pass in Flames. Okay. So if they have enough mana, they can essentially cast that twice. But I'm almost never a fan of like forcing the Burning Wish itself. Can they go off next turn? They're going to have a lot of mana. I think it's safer to wait if they go for it. And then next turn we can, uh, well, we can't frog with blue up. <sighs> I mean, having double consign, uh, if they do have a storm win, they don't have any way of ripping cards out of our hand. They do have vexing bubble, but that doesn't actually change anything. Okay. This is a good, good sign. It's a sign that they're going to take more than one turn. So they flip some good cards play a land for a turn. All right. And I am going to go and get my surveil land here, which I should have done last turn. Then I wouldn't draw on that planes, which is very bad right now. Planes doesn't accomplish anything we're trying to accomplish because we're going to, I mean, I think that's an above average draw. We're not going to be able to cast it is the problem. I I'm just wondering if we, can we even lose if we had three consigns? I really, this is weird, but now it's on the radar, but I, I don't want that card. I want to get another blue land so I can cast my frog. That is great. Okay, now we can't really... Uh, we've got Consign. We've got Blue Blast. I don't think we can afford to let them go for it. I think we need to hold this up. Okay, they're Manamorphosing. This is fine. This is not the fight. Fight will be like Jessica's Will or something that... Uh, like They can just reveal a ton of cards here. Blast Zone. That's good to know about. Because they're exiling two cards, Vexing Bobble and Raj. So I think they're probably going to play Raj here. Just it makes sense to have him out. And if he if they do, then I do have a window to kill Raj with uh, Prismatic Ending. And I can still keep up a consign and, uh, and or a Blue Blast. What I really want to do is just draw another blue source. Then I'll, then I'll feel great. And this is precisely the, the matchup where you don't want to be drawing wastelands. And that's one of the reasons I'm glad I don't have a wasteland. There was one game, uh, I think, in the uh, league that I played previous to this that I went through. That's a blue card for force that is definitely going to get fed to force. I'm just going to get rid of Raj. This uh, prismatic ending isn't going to get a lot better. I mean, technically, they can, they can play out the... Uh, Bobble. I'll probably consign a bobble. Just because it'll give them pause and maybe not like let them go forward. Yeah, I think this is fine to do. Because I don't think they're going to go off this turn. I could be wrong. This seems like they may not have enough material to go off here. Okay, great. And this is precisely what we hope for. Okay, they've got a seedling song. They've got a mountain. So next turn, they've got all the mana in the world. Unfortunately, this blast zone does mean that um, Psychic Frog is likely going to die if we play it out. So I'm just not convinced that we should play it out. If we draw a land, I will play it out because I'll have Blue Blast. But like, basically, I just want to stop whatever they're trying to do. Whenever they're going off, I want to stop that. This Burning Wish is fine. Let's see what they get. Jessica's Will. Okay. So that is definitely a uh, Blue Elemental Blast card. I think the payoff of us finding a land is high enough that I'm willing to do this. I don't really care about white mana, so I'll use that. Fetch, please. Oh, we did find a fetch. Okay, Krakus isn't good. Uh, I mean, all their creatures are legends, but I just don't think it's good enough. I'd much rather have the Misty in play. Uh, I think I'm going to put back Strix. I think it's the least... Imp oh, wait, I'm going to put back Harbinger. That doesn't do anything here. It's actively bad to play that. Yep, we're going to chill for one more turn. And then we're going to go get Recruiter. And we're probably... What are we going to get with Recruiter? Unfortunately, I don't have Lavinia. That's one of the decisions I made is like, I'm just going to accept... Lavinia is so bad in so many matchups uh, that you don't generally want it. It's actually pretty bad in this matchup because they're not casting any free spells anyway. So there's not really any good obvious card for me to get. So I think I'm going to let them do their craziness. And I'm going to have Consign for Force. I'm going to let them create all the mana they need. Hopefully they don't have a lot of like card flip spells in their hand. 
Consigned means I'm safe from storm as long as I have the mana up. That's fine. So they do have Jessica's Will, which generates a ton of mana. I think they'll probably do that instead of flipping three cards. If they Jessica's Will, I might actually want to stop that because they could flip three cards, and that would be really bad. They may not necessarily be going for it. They were inclined to use Seething Song because it was going to go away after this turn. They could Jessica's Will and just have a bigger setup turn. So I think the two for one, uh, I am going to go ahead and counter this. This is a card that you just kind of have to counter. And maybe they stop. So bonus round, it doubles every spell they cast. So basically, it technically doubles your forces as well, but it's just, it's really messy. Because they, they, you're not going to counter every spell and they get a ton of value on their way through there. They've got so much mana. We really just had to run them out of cards. Seething Song's fine. Now they can Jessica's Will. Past in Flames. Oh, they can cast it again. So what can they get back? They can get back bonus round here. If I force this, they have Jessica's Will. Um, they can flash it back for five mana. So let's say they Jessica's Will. I force that. Then they have Past and Flames chilling in their graveyard, and they can use it next turn, and I have to stop it then. The thing is, they have a bonus round in there. Ah, uh, this is so hard. So my thinking is... Um, They've used a lot of mana this turn. They have two cards in hand, but they can totally just Seething Song, Seething Song, Ren's Run, Ren's Run. They can use this twice. I think I have to force this. So if they use this a second time, then I'll just accept it, but then it won't be in their graveyard to use next turn. So they can just as well here create enough. Well, actually, they can't create enough mana to pass in flame. So that we, we have one turn to potentially do something here. So I'm going to go get the Surveil Land. Whoa, they just conceded. Okay, I think that was totally premature. Totally premature concession, but we did uh, get the positive record. Uh, I think we had blue-black reanimate beat when we rematched that player, um, but, well, I don't know what would have happened in game three, but I think we definitely won that game. It was so embarrassing. Let's go review that game just real quick because I just want to drive home how far ahead I was and how hard I fought to get to that point and then how I just threw it all away with... Uh, you know, bad attack, essentially not leaving back like the one card that, that could have beat me there. I was like, Oh, they don't have any haste creatures in their deck. It's free to like attack. And had I held back, it just wouldn't have been like that. Okay. So for whatever reason, it's not showing the, uh, the playbacks. How do how do I uh, get it to show the playback? So I'm going to go in here. Um, and then, okay, let's take a look at the deck real quick. So we've already gone over the deck, I think twice, but, uh, there, there was nothing wrong with the deck. It was just piloting errors, in my opinion. That's why we lost uh, the the two matches that we lost. Uh, one of the matches, of course, we lost. We probably wouldn't have won anyway. I had to take my kids to school. And uh, even though the clock was low, I was actually like facing a much more serious clock. And my wife was like, you know, crossed armed, like standing, you got to take the kids to school. So even though I punted there, I probably wouldn't have won game three. I probably would have just scooped game three. Uh, so, and we didn't necessarily have time to win a game three anyway because i was just thinking so hard about like checking off boxes like how do we die to reanimator uh we drew uh so many fairy macabras which were, we used all but one of them and it's great to have one in our hand uh i don't feel like four fairy macabra is overboard at all did i miss having lavinia not really it wouldn't have made any difference in any of those matches except for maybe the the covered oh, the the uh covered jewel match that's the other one we lost it could have made a difference there but I don't think it really would have made a difference because the real problem was they were able to get uh, Chaos Defiler out and, and copy it three times. <laughs> you, you generally lose games where they copy their Chaos Defiler and exile multiple things and have five, four tramplers. Um, Draking, I think, was totally fine. Uh, I don't have it, any issues with how I played that off the top of my mind, like without reviewing the actual playback. Let's, let's see if we can review it. This is already a super long video. So I'm going to assume if you're watching, you're like genuinely interested in this this game and you're not like, hurry up and finish. I want to go watch Bosch and Roll or something like that, right? Okay, so uh, okay, so let's take a look at this. This is the one that we lost that just where I punted. But let's take a look at how grindy this deck is that we even made it that far. Okay, so uh, we have a strong opener with double Fairy Macabre. We don't have land, so I have to play conservatively around Wasteland. But I opt to go ahead and get the Surveil Land here. 
which I think is correct. And we do find land number two off of Brainstorm, which is a high price to pay for our land, but it's a price I'll pay every day of the week. You want to make your land drops. We don't have anything to do here. This is the first punt is I don't put in Felia because uh, I, th I think I get confused or something. Do I put in Felia here? Barrow Goyf. Okay. So yeah, I do put in Felia, but I think they have a days for it. Okay. So Barrow Goyf is a very daunting creature to go against. Um, so they force my second threat. I do successfully solitude here, which is great because we got the Barrow Goyf off the table and not just off the table, but exiled from the game, but they have a second Barrow Goyf. Um, and then we're drawing like bad cards, basically that like redundant cards that don't do anything. So here we're like, okay, we can finally attack and get a card off of frog and we do. And it's a Drake and I attempt a Drake here and they have yet another counter spell. So that sucks. We've just been choked on land mana, but I do think I stand behind that decision to, uh, try to Drake it because if we Drake it, we're so far ahead. Like this Barragoy, if they do not have good ways of dealing with it, they have to get a revolted or, uh, yeah, revolted, uh, fatal push, or they have to, um, somehow borrow it back to hand. So they do play brazen borrower, which of course we know from how this game ends, but, uh, brazen borrower is kind of scary against Gilda Drake because they potentially have the Drake and okay. And they have yet another force. So look at all the hate that we're fighting through, right? Like, and they're connecting with Barragoyf. They're doing all this stuff. Okay. And we have the fairy macabre. We've had three of them. <laughs> so we're just like thrilled that they, uh, invested a bunch of entombs. So at this point, like if we can come back, we're back, you know, and, and this is where we start to stabilize five life. And then, uh, so this is what I'm saying. We fought so hard to get back here. And, and thankfully I have another, uh, fairy macabre. So we just had to deal with this, uh, fanatic, which we have a plow for at this point, they have one card in hand. So we're like handily handling this note that the fact that we're choked on white mana is still an issue. We aren't able to deploy Felia here. We do have to take a chump. It's worth noting that I could have played out fairy macabre. No, I couldn't. That wouldn't be a good play. You almost never want to cast fairy macabre. We can in our colors, but it's a bad chump. Okay. So here's a much better chump in baleful Strix. And, uh, I do get Felia out. I play it out, uh, around hard cast force, which I am totally comfortable with that decision. They don't attack, which is great. So let's, let's think about this. I think I can recruit her. Um, I get another Strix. I, I feel like that was a totally defensible decision. I don't think I played, made any errors here. I was just playing too slow. Um, and then they eventually attack in, which is great. And they're thinking like, oh, I'll just reanimate it. But you're not going to be reanimating anything on my watch. And then this is where we're like, okay, now we can press. We've got like so much going for us. We've got the flip thing. And if I just hold this back, like I'm almost certain that we win this game. I'm almost certain we win this game if I had been disciplined and held back. But no, they specifically, like if I thought for a second, okay, what could they possibly have? They have the ability to both bounce my blocker and to play a lethal threat in one turn cycle. So I feel like we played great up until this point. And I, I don't take issue with any of my decisions. If you take issue with them, please leave a comment. That's super helpful. I love uh, differing perspectives. If any of you uh, Espervile veterans are watching this and, and you think my play style is bad, like I'm making bad decisions or something, please let me know. I want to be better. I do not mind. I've got like super thick skin. I don't even care. My ego is not vested in this game. <laughs> I just love playing it. And I, you know, it's a lot more fun if you're playing right and you're not making silly punts. I understand that you can go to like the F and M and you can play against people who are just having fun and playing, you know, kitchen table magic and stuff. And I play with those types of people all the time and it's, it's a blast, but I do also want to win. I'm kind of like a semi spike. Um, like I, I feel like, like I was really kicking myself for that play and, and we can take a look at game one, which we also lost. Uh, again, we won, I think the other two games versus reanimate, but let's see what happened here. I think this is the one where they just had like six creatures or something. So this, uh, is a slow start against them, but we know what they're on because we just played them. Um, so I think I get a surveil land here, brainstorm. So this is imperfect brainstorm but they do have the frog which is strong we don't immediately have a way to deal with frog so i surveil again again in in this matchup in my opinion you just play fearlessly uh, don't fetch basics um now they have a second frog so they had a really strong start um they had force for our uh baleful strix how did they get rid of our bill I, I think they forced it so we're just sitting here taking damage but we've seen this before and we fought through it right we can do it it's just hard so here I said the play to lose line is to get the solitude back. The play to win line is to Baleful Strix. And that turns out to be good, I believe. They they have to 
they opt to, do they kill it or do they attack into it? They attack in and I kill it. And now we're only facing one frog. And now they reanimate that. And that's where the game starts to turn. And now I have to focus my effort on getting rid of my own overlord because we're pre-boarded. Uh, of course, if we were post-boarded, I'd have like so many. Uh, <laughs> not necessarily, but I would probably just mulligan until I found a fairy macabre or like just an incredibly solid hand if I knew I was up against reanimator post-board. So I have to fight my own guy, but I do have Overlord in play now. Thanks to the hard cast. And they didn't have days for once. But this is where things start going off the rails. They exile that. I don't have a blue card for my force. So this is why, like, I mean, you're going to get these situations like we're flooded this game. Like we drew a ton of lands and that's good because we were able to hard cast, but it's not good that we don't have a single blue card uh, for force. Cause let's think about like what would have happened had I forced that. Like I still got the thing in play. They can animate dead. They, this only gets cards from their graveyards. They wouldn't be able to get solitude back. So I feel like if we were, if this were a blue card to pitch to force, we, we suspect they don't have days. Then this would have completely changed the dynamic of the game. Cause overlord would, uh, have been first of all solitude would have been in my graveyard and i wouldn't have been able to return it and then after a couple of attacks like I, I can exile one of their cards they don't have enough cards to deal with my overlord in combat so this very much this game in my humble opinion very much came down to me not drawing a second blue card and and at this point the game is unwinnable um i try to do something but like they have the force so if they had the force when i had my force then it wouldn't have mattered i probably would have lost um i but i do think that this I don't think this game was winnable is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I would love feedback if like I'm missing some line, but you just have to accept that the most powerful deck in the format that's going to get at least one ban, maybe two, uh, not this, but um, I mean, like they'll probably never ban reanimate just like they'll never ban days and they never should ban days, but maybe they should ban reanimate is kind of what I'm thinking. I think the effect is just way too powerful because nobody cares about life loss and legacy um and you know it's if you banned the card reanimate you just wouldn't have to worry about reanimator as an archetype now maybe some people at wizards love the reanimator archetype and maybe that pissed a bunch of players off but i'll tell you i would be very happy to not have to you know dedicate four slots to uh graveyard hate in basically every deck i play and also play exile based removal um the reason people are playing white again is precisely because this card was printed just recently and it basically flips um you know, like it doesn't matter how many of the threats you remove, they can metamorphosis and they can bring back two, three different cards sometimes, uh, depending on if they have, if they chain metamorphosis fanatics and, uh, it itself is a four, four, right? So, um, four, four lifelink and it grants lifelink to the frogs and yeah, it's crazy. It, it, nothing is crazier than this hitting, uh, a turn three, cause that's the earliest they can miracle it and getting a, um, troll of Kaza doom on the table. And then the troll having lifelink, and then they're gaining 10 life and you're taking 10 life. Like I've literally had uh, uh, one of the reasons I've, I've kind of stopped playing Dreadnought is because this card just solos Dreadnought. Like, you know, you're attacking for 12. They just ignore it because they're about to gain 10 back and then they hit you for 10. And it's just like a horrible feeling losing when you have your Dreadnought on the table. Uh, get getting outraced. It's crazy, but anyway, I'm not complaining. I, I uh, I've just accepted this is like the deck that probably it was 20 plus percent of the uh, Japan uh, event, the Asia Eternal Weekend, and it's going to be probably at least 25 percent of the U.S. Eternal Weekend, which is what I'm preparing for. So, uh, I've had a really fun time playing this deck. I'm going to keep playing it. Uh, I think we won uh, six. We won six of the uh, matches that we played today out of 10. And I think um, two of them were, well, one of them I definitely could have won. The one where I just ran out of time. Uh, and I had already won game one and I was handily winning game two against Nadu, Bant Nadu. Uh, so you could argue that like that was like a 7-10 record. I'm not going to be that generous to myself because I did lose that. Uh, you could also argue that, um, I mean, I need to get better at playing the deck, frankly. I hope you're getting better at potentially playing this by watching the mistakes I make and hopefully reading helpful comments. So again, I'll leave it there. Uh, if you have thoughts, please leave a comment. If you think there are cards that should absolutely be included, it's a crime that you don't have um, you know, Lavinia in your 75 when people are playing Storm. Like, I don't expect to run into Storm at Eternal Weekend. I did play against Storm one time 
uh, last year and Lavinia did not save me. I, was, I still lost the storm even with Lavinia, in my deck. So, uh, and that was when I was playing uh, four color beanstalk. Um, so Lavinia is not like a lock. They do have, you know, cards that can bounce it. They can potentially ignore it. Um, if they know you have Lavinia, they can play out all their jewelry quickly. And then, you know, Lavinia isn't really stopping them from doing anything. Uh, I just think that like three drakes is essential and you need to have at least seven ways to return your, your three drakes to your hand. Otherwise you die to drakes. And we did see me die to drakes in the, uh, coveted jewel matchup. Um, the other thing to note is that like, these are all four of us. You have to play four Tameo. You have to play four Strix. You have to play four Psychic Frog. They're too strong to ignore right now. I feel like you have to play four Felia. Some people in the Esper Vial, uh, they're in the Discord. They're only playing three, but I think she's so integral to the deck and this combo. Like she combos with Drake and she combos with Overlord, and in a way she combos you know with Belfull Strix and Recruiter in essentially getting a whole bunch of value. I feel like you know like I it's really difficult for me to cut anything even for uh skyclave. If I had one slot left, it would definitely go to skyclave, but I feel like we were seeing situations where we weren't drawing enough mana, even with 29 mana. So I feel like this is the lowest you can go. And I don't think anybody's playing 28 and like if they're playing 28, they're playing witch enchanter or they're playing Bogart trawler, the, the multi-face uh, land cards. So I feel like this is pretty tight and you would have to really sell me on removing any of these cards. Harbinger of the Seas, obviously not useful in a lot of matchups, but the matchups that is useful, it wins the game. And being able to put it in off vial, just it's the chef's kiss. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna definitely be tweaking, but I don't see anything to tweak here. Like I loved having the prismatic endings. Uh, I love just having lots of cheap interactions. I would love to have an additional force negation, but I feel like Hydroblast is really good right now. Consigned to Memory is a four of for sure. Very Macabre is a four of. I don't know what to cut. So yeah, it. I don't. I, I like having the third uh, hydroblast more than I like having the second force negation, just for the matchups where it really matters. Like, uh, anyway, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I know so. I'll leave it there like three times. But I have so much to say about this deck. It is such a pleasure to play. That is one thing. Like, it's a high skill deck. It's a slow deck. It involves a lot of decisions. It's hard to play on MTGO and paper. I can play like lightning fast because I'm just like I'm leaving my voil alone for the rest of the game, uh, or uh, I'm just setting my companion here. Announcing it at the beginning of the game, I don't have to like click the three times to show my uh, companion every round, right? Uh, every match or every game of the match. So it, it is a lot faster uh, in paper, but it is going to be an issue if you play this on MTGO. Unless you're like a super fast type player, you are going to be playing against the clock as much as you're playing against your opponent in a lot of matchups. Until next time, be excellent to each other and party on. <laughs>